All right, we are live. We are live once again on the Danza Project. Oh my God, it's Art Basel weekend. Mm. Like, let, let me tell you, man. Let me tell you how this shit goes. Living out here, <laughs> right? Living out here, Art Basel weekend. There's a lot of cool shit that goes on. Tons. You know what I mean? You get an opportunity to do a lot of cool shit. Not only that, like, you, you know, at this time of the year, Right, it's the holidays. People got a little bit more energy and a little bit less energy at the same time. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you know, like it's 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 like when you go outside, there's all this life. It's a beautiful thing. You got you know, every you had people chanting Crowder, Fat Joe, Rick Ross out there with Mike Woo. Tyson. You know, at the Hard Rock, Woo. just you know, playing with their money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Good life. And then you got opportunities to sit down with some pretty dope individuals. I think that coming into this podcast thing. This is what, like, made my life so much more, like, meaningful, right? Just being able to sit here and speak to people in a different way than most do, right? We're getting to know them. We don't, we're not sitting here, like, again, super research. Oh, I'm going to need to ask this, and I need, I need to do this, and I need to do that. No, it's like, yo, we get to sit down and meet somebody for the first time in front of everybody's face. Like, everybody gets to see this. Live. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, my name's Danza. You know what I mean? This is episode number Ooh. 153. 153. 153 Ooh. of the Danza Project. I appreciate you, Orlando. And we got my guy, Kato, in the building. In the motherfucking builds, ladies and gentlemen. Kato said holiday. he wasn't going to miss it. He wasn't going to miss uh, it. Never. Man. Nah. No, sir. <laughs> Come on. I had to. I saw the because we got a little bit of a roster coming up. And Woo. some of it we can't even really I'm speak. I'm bad lead off of Ricky Henderson up in yeah, here? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Let's so, do it. So, kicking the weekend off, you know, just to go crazy with a legendary interview like this. Not even, and we hate to say interview with a conversation like this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a pleasure, my brother. If I can, let me get a cheers with you. And for those that don't know, that's Elliot Wilson. Yes, in the Come zone. on. You know what I'm Gentlemen. saying? Gentlemen, peace and love. Salute. Yeah, so I know, I know. Thank you for having me. Yeah, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? Like, it, you know, there's there's so much that goes on behind the scenes with setting up these podcasts, <laughs> uh, setting up these interviews, these conversations, um, knowing when people are coming into town and yes, we sir. can get those opportunities. And, you know, when this interview came up, one of the things that that f the first things I said, I was like, no, I need I need to make sure we get as much time with Mr. Wilson as possible. I'm here, Mr. Baby, I'm here. Wilson! <laughs> Hello. So how you feeling, man? Welcome feeling to South good. Florida again. Thank you, brother. Thank you guys for having me, man. Absolutely. Lovely sure. setup. And I said... I started doing the research, man. You guys putting in the work, man. The Fat Joe, the Brandon Marshall, and he had the viral thing with the you know the yeah. crazy folks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. putting the work in, man. Congrats, man. Appreciate yeah. you. Oh yeah, sir. But but like the most important thing is how you feeling and and where you at right now in in, in this space in life. You know, we're, we got you out here in South Florida. It's man. the holidays. I like I like to see. You know, are people stressed out? Or are you living good right now? I'm living good, but I, you know, I, I think it's a challenging year for me. I'm trying to figure out a lot of things, my career wise, of just the challenge of like, um, more than staying relevant because that gets overused, right? Staying mm -hmm. relevant per se, but just figuring out like, you know, what's the next like angle for me or the right path or the right things because I still very much feel like I have a lot more to contribute. Um, so it's a transitional type of like crossroad period of my career for somebody. Who's done a lot? I'm still not yeah. completely satisfied, so I'm trying to figure out what the next chapters look like fully. You know? yeah, and not to get too deep off the top. No, that's <laughs> listen. Great answer. Listen, that's how we that's how we started off. That sounds yeah, like pausey that, that, too, like yeah, deep yeah, off yeah, the top. Yeah, 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 Shout out to Camden oh, yeah. Mason. Yeah, 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 somebody yeah, somebody yeah, in yeah. the comment section will be oh, 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 that's yeah, it. Yeah, you know what you know what Fred was doing. You know what I mean? Yo, pause. Deep off the top yeah, yeah, sounds yeah, yeah. crazy. Like deep <laughs> off the top. <laughs> I don't even know what you're doing there, but yeah. God bless no, everybody. It's, but. it's funny because it's like you gotta abide by the rules. So depending on the room that you in, it's like, yo, y'all do that? Okay, yeah. No homo, nigga. I said it, I said it, I said it, I got it in, all right. Oh, pause again, you know. You gotta watch it. No, nah, but I love it, man. I still love this culture, man. I feel like I still have a lot to contribute, you know. Like I, I sometimes I get, you know, it's been a year when I've gotten a little competitive at times and I've said things and as you guys can see it went crazy. And then now we have a whole world where people analyze everything that's said and then they build content off what you say and then they put oh, a picture yeah. 
of you and Drake and this and this, yeah. and then they build their content off you. Reaction video. Oh, reaction video culture we're in. So it's just, it was just very interesting. Like it's very much been a very like transitional year for me of like understanding, oh, this is really how it moves right now, mm -hmm. you know? And like, I, I, I pride myself that I feel like in some ways I'm still like the last like true journalist, you know? I don't, mm -hmm. I try not to go with the salacious shit. Obviously, yep. it's a very salacious landscape right now. Oh, yeah. Um, I try not to. I just don't. It doesn't interest me, and it's not my lane, even though I respect, you know, academics and Vlad and guys that do that, Adam 22, whoever. Um, but it's not me. So I got to figure out how to do this sort of thing that's, like, rooted in where I come from. But at the same time, I just don't want to be, like, I, like, I would say the challenge now is, like, you have, like, Nas, right? Like, Nas does these records with Hit Boy and his great records, but yep. they don't do big numbers. Like, can the older guys still do big numbers? Can mm. I still be in that conversation <laughs> of, like, that? Yeah. Because, you know, and then I'm from the era where the biggest was the best. When I was at XXL, I was the biggest, the most popular, yeah. and I felt I also was doing the best quality of work. So yeah. there's that balance. I feel like a lot of these can be popular now, but are they the best? Or is it like a fast food kind of yeah. culture yeah. of things? Well, that's, the, that's where it gets really, really interesting because it's like you almost have to be part journalist part influencer mm -hmm. to have not just a voice, but a relevant voice and a voice that people want to talk to. And to your point, we, we struggle with this too. The low hanging fruit is to be salacious. Yeah. And What's crazy be. about y'all with what I, I, I'm just getting to know you guys and the great work you're putting in, but even when you're doing the Charleston white, the, like I felt like you was approaching it on some like journalism type stuff to it. Mm -hmm. Like you let the foolery, the salacious shit in your house, but at the same time, it's like, <laughs> You're not approaching it on that grab for it. If it happens. But then you, you know. still got the grab for it because people wall out and they just, they're going to play to it. It's almost like, I remember that when we used to do uh, my company Ego Trip, when we did the early days of reality TV. We did a white rapper show. We did Miss Rap Supreme. Oh, so the whole idea of reality television is like, you put people in position that they're going to, they're going to do it. They're going to mm -hmm. do the thing because yeah. that's what their DNA is. So mm -hmm. if I'm Brittany or whoever, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this salacious thing because that's my temperament to go to that. So yeah. even if you're being a touch of class and you're not going for that, you're going to get that moment because you've already built, you know, yeah. the strength of the situation. So we, 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 we caught a lot of uh, flack, a lot of conversation, you know, people saying, yeah, how could you let her, and how could you let, and you guys just let, let. And we're like, listen, what did you guys think was going to happen? This is Put, who people are, yeah. Well, well just off the, the title, Charleston White and Brittany Renner in the room, <laughs> we don't exactly know what's going to happen, but we know it's yeah. going to be interesting, so let's facilitate but, but this do you conversation. But you guys feel like you did, you, think, you feel like you do approach that with like still a classy like journalism Absolutely. thing to that? You're not trying to be exploitive to yeah. just get the click, 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 I think, right? I think more than anything, right, we're not trying to be journalists, and I mean mm -hmm. this in the aspect of I, I don't want to disrespect a journalist like yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not my that's that's not what I am. Yeah. Like I'm broadcast, a, broadcasting. Yeah, Let's yeah, say broadcasting. Exactly. And so you you know when you come into that situation, the first first and foremost, I always want everybody to have a great time. I'm 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 welcoming mm -hmm. you into my studio. Okay. You know what I mean? And why why invite somebody if just to disrespect them or mm. treat them like they're less than? You know, yeah. I believe the most uh, powerful thing is having a network, you know, yes, and, and in order to build a network, you got to be able to, to have great relationships. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So why would I invite somebody here and then just treat them? Bash them. You know, and see, like that's interesting, person. too, because I feel like sometimes like they'll say that with, with they'll sometimes criticize me or criticize me and beat out with rap radar. It's like. Well, you didn't challenge the person, or you yeah. just didn't, you know, he said this, but it's like, but certain to me, like you're saying, it's like you letting this person on your platform, they're your guests. The same dynamic as somebody coming to your house. It's like if they're telling their truth, they're telling their truth. It's not up to, to me, my opinion, of like, I gotta like knock down your truth. If I feel that's genuinely your truth, like I may not agree. But I'm not, it's not my place to just kind of just kind of cut that down Listen. and prove to you, the outside listener, that I called him on that. He knows that that's not this or she knows that that's not that. And I feel like that's what y'all didn't do with that. Like, y'all let these people be who they're going to be. Yeah. You know, you, it's your platform. Like, if it goes too left with it, you're going to reel it in. But it's like, I think that there is there should be respect somewhat if somebody goes in your platform as a guest. Like, Absolutely. it's almost like coming to your house, literally. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I think sometimes it gets lost and people just want that like moment of like confrontation because yeah. obviously confrontation will go viral. But Click at the same date. time, it's just like, you know, like there's a respect that you could get a Charleston white, whether I agree with him or not, come to your platform and sit and be you know part of that. Yeah. So 
Are you just stepping on that out the gate? I don't think you should. And I think that people get so caught up in just trying to make everything this sort of confrontational moment. Mm -hmm. And we also get a different side of those yeah. individuals. Like Absolutely, because you're treating them with respect. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're not just going for, like, you know he's a viral machine and he could do this. And if you say this, yeah, I dare you to mace me right now. <laughs> <laughs> we could have done that, right? Like we hey, got mace contests, right? <laughs> Call mace on the phone and have a mace contest. Uh, uh, go. <laughs> uh, that's a good idea. Next time we're going to have mace and mace. You know what I mean? Mace and mace and bait. <laughs> but what drew you to, into this space then to do this? I used to do music. Okay. Um, I'm from Buffalo, New York, yes, like sir. I told you. And, you know, one thing that I always got, like always is you should back in the day it was blogging. You yeah. should blog. Yeah. You got a voice. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah the, the voice thing is like yep. strange to the, the way I got into the <laughs> podcasting thing with the voice, but, um, no, I meant voice you, before voice voice, just that like influence. You have a point yeah, of view, sure, like yeah. you have things to I'm say. A, I, I'm a problem. Starter. Yeah. Yeah. You're, That's you're, what I yeah. was. Initially I was a problem starter yep. and, and, and I know how to stir things up, you know, yep. and make sure that everybody is tuned in. So yep. and ultimately I like, I like talking. Anybody could tell you, you know, he talks a lot. I, yep. Yeah, I do. It's okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and and I, could, I could talk. And, um, and the funny thing about the voice is, as I started uh, getting everything for the podcast, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, oh, I need to get uh, this roadcaster. Uh, what, what, you know, what is, how good is it for podcasts? And like, yep. the first time I grabbed that, and they go, because um, we went through two or three of them now. Uh, the guy <laughs> goes, are you doing the voice right now? <laughs> I was yeah. like doing. I was like doing. I feel what? like I'm yeah. your He's like, I feel are like you you're on? Like, are yeah, you on? Like you're doing the interview voice. <laughs> People never do that to you. Yeah. You be out at dinner yeah, and they're yeah, like, Yo, yeah. Ellie, you doing it right now, man? Yeah. I feel like I'm on the radar right now, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? But that's yeah. what it is. So like, and and it's just, I love it. I love being. Yeah. I I love music. I love entertainment. Yeah. You know, like it's a deep love. You know, I again, you know, if you do music in any capacity, you Absolutely. love music. And then growing up and, and hearing people like Conway the Machine and, and West Side Gun and yeah. Benny the Butcher, so, you know, growing so up in that you, studio. What was your age? Through, so you was connected through that period where there was... Yeah, when I was version? recording, they would be out uh, on, on the other side. Like, th th yeah. there was their home studio, DJ Shea. Oh, you know, those DJ days. Shea's Shout, taught me everything I, I know. Shout out mm -hmm. DJ yep. Shea, yeah. Um, he's right the one that taught me how to use all the programs. Wow. You know oh, I mean? so you're, so, you're like a descendant of, the, of the, the, yeah, that yeah, DNA. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's why I'm here. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's why Monday, Monday night, we got Conway the Machine. If, you, if you're really Derringer, you could just submit your Derringer. You know oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Der Derringer's a, a great I dude. Yeah. I know Derringer. Yeah. I know Derringer. Der Derringer. But a lot of people know who he looks like. Same you, you school. You say you're Derringer. Yeah, same so. school. Yeah, yeah so I, I went to the same school growing so up. So when did you Anderson realize that, like, because I always joke, like, you know, because, like, I remember when they first, who, who did they get with? They got with my guy, Haitian Mike, Mike Caron, and they signed the Shady. Okay. With Drew Paul. Paul Rosenberg, yeah. you know? So I mean, that that was the point to me that I could have just jumped on a bandwagon. Like I didn't know these guys from uh, nothing, but like if I was a fake, early. if I was a fake dude, Griselda, yeah, I heard about yeah, Griselda. Yeah, yeah. I think they already had the whole uh, that that New York show where Raekwon came out and they got the whole. Yeah. So it's still early, right? So I didn't connect to it. Like I heard a couple things. I knew they could rap. I knew it was kind of like a boom bap of of the, like the yeah. '90s hip hop I grew up in in my age. And I and I didn't think they was whack, but I just didn't have my real connection to them. I remember when Gun put out um Supreme Blind Tell. Mm. I just liked that album. I, I was running it back, and I was just like, okay, I'm starting to get it. Like I just yeah. for some reason that album connected to me, yeah. and it was a genuine thing. And R.I.P. Hovane, um, okay. manager who was in the, in the game, he passed away last year actually. Yep. And he was working with Gun, and I was like, "Yo, can we get Gun on the podcast? Rapper on our podcast." Yeah. And that was the first time I met Gun. That was the beginning of me sort of connecting to that movement. So I always say I don't try to front like I'm Mr. Day One, but but it has to be to me. I have to have a genuine connection. Like that's when I genuinely began exactly, to connect to yeah. the movement. Yeah. I could have did it before, but it would have been fake. Right? And I mean, like that was it. I like Supreme Blind Tell. That was my entry point. Every as a fan, you have that like. One project that's like your entry point to this artist or connected to them is Supreme yeah. Blind Tell was that for me. They have a lot of that because their work rate is insane. Yeah, exactly. So, so you can like they Paul and Nashes and all that. And they I was ask, like, yeah, yeah, I heard about that. But they can like, ask their yeah. fan, which one was it for you? Yeah. And, and it's interesting to find out at what point in their life they were that yeah. you found them. And then you know they can and they've grown to appreciate that because they know I kept it a hundred. And so like, and then yeah. what I what I always felt like I always do a good job of like. I'm not the person, especially now that I'm older, because I'm 52 years old, I should not be the person to discover you 
Mm-hmm. But what happens is if I get behind you or I start to understand it, I could help magnify it. Yes. You know, I, that, that's my job. Like, that's I'm it. not the one that to me should be a younger person. Like, I'm not the right. one to bring it to and fro, but it's like, if I genuinely then connect to it, I'm going to magnify that and help it get bigger and help it seem more legitimate mm-hmm. and also get eyes on that from people outside of that that may not know that because yeah. they follow my social media feeds or they respect who I am in the game. So yeah. I magnify you've, it, but I'm not trying to be like Mr. Discovery. You've, you've definitely graduated yeah. from the, yo, let me let me break this artist real quick. You've graduated from that. Now 100%. it's like, and, and that's the cool part to me. My favorite way to find out about music was just that. Yeah. Somebody coming to me and be like, yo, you... Listen to this, okay, yeah, and hearing exactly. a single or hearing what you know one track, and then going back and finding the discography, and then hearing more about the guy or girl yeah. or whatever it is, and discovering it that way. I feel like that's real hip hop, and that's where streaming is good now. Actually, there's so much trouble about streaming, obviously, with the wages and what people get. But what is good is if something hits your radar, you could then just go on your Griselda binge and like catch up and listen yeah. to all these projects and listen to this like and get informed about it and find out what you like, what you don't like. You can get in that rabbit hole of like. Okay, yeah. I, I see what this is. Let me go through this person's catalog and see what I mess with. Peel the layers. And that, that's the best part of uh, music is getting to experience it for the first time, right? Like, if you catch it late, yep. well, then Discovery. you got an arsenal of music to listen to. You know, if you catch it early on, you got to wait for the next tape to drive. You know what I mean? Because you're, you're there early. When you get to, like, sort through it all, like, there's a lot of people I didn't start off as fans of Little Wayne being one of them. I yeah. didn't start off being really? Little Wayne. Fan. I, I got it's a great topic. You set me up with the alley oop. So <laughs> <laughs> I put it was a uh, you know everybody loves the Carter Two album. Yeah. I feel like the Carter Two album was the, was the first one where it was like, okay, we can't like, front him, we can't yeah. front on this yeah. guy. Like this guy, like Hot Boy, this Cash Money, that Little Wayne. Mm. Like what's going on with this guy? This mm-hmm. this guy's special. He's going for the throne. He's special. Carter, too, gave us that. So at the time when I was at Double XL, I wasn't sold on Lil Wayne as the star. I was with Juvenile from Jump. So oh, we did Juvenile for our second cover. Juvenile had high. He had the triple. Like, I come in 1999 to 2000. Yeah. Cash Money yeah, taking over for the 99 2000s. Yeah. So my second issue, I had DMX on my first cover. I had Juvenile on my second cover. And we built this great relationship with Cash Money. Um, shout out to Vanessa Satin, who runs it to this day. She was the plug. She dealt with Cash Money. So all those guys, Hot Boys, we did a Hot Boys cover, had the whole thing covered. Yeah. So in my mind, Juvie's the star. BG's the star. Yeah, Lil Wayne, cat? Weezy, like <laughs> yeah. Lil Weezy, like he wasn't, like we was just fronting, like we didn't think he was, he's like the child star. Exactly. He was a young dude. How, he's how coming could, at the end. How could you take him that After serious? you get that, drop it like it's hot, drop it like it's hot. Like he's coming at the end. It's like, he's dope, but it's like, you don't think he's going to be like Jay-Z. How could you know? And that's the no. beauty of hip hop. Everybody, I would say they didn't think it was gonna be Jay Z. It was gonna be A Z. It was Jay Z. So, <laughs> but with Wayne with Carter too, it's like I, I wrote, I, I did a whole thing, and I said I, I put it up on there. I, I claimed it. I was like, yo, in 2005, I did not think that Wayne. I wasn't sold on what I said. How did I say? It? I said I wasn't sold on Wayne being a solo star yet. So I did a split cover. I did Little Wayne and Beanie Siegel. Mm-hmm. And Beanie Siegel was on fire. We wanted Beanie Siegel to ascend to whatever. Yeah. So a lot of times when I was running Double XL, what I would do is I would not get caught up in the East Coast bias that they say, like you know, what I'm saying like because you get caught up in East Coast, you're in New York, you yeah. think everything is New York, all you promote, and it's New just York. like so. I would do Jada Kiss like in ten cities, like from like uh, Rhode Island, Maine, all the way down to Florida, ten cities, ten twelve cities, Jada Kiss and Nelly. And I would do Nelly, the rest of the country. Stretch it. South, Midwest, California. It would be huge for me. So I split covers that way. I did Fat Joe and T.I. Smart. I did Nelly and Jada Kiss. Mm-hmm. And I did Lil Wayne and Beanie Siegel. But looking back on it, that seems crazy. Like trying to act like you didn't think Lil Wayne was going to be a star. <laughs> and it's funny because I did Juvenile by himself the month after. And that's when Hurricane Katrina happened. Mm. But by the time that Juvie cover came out, a lot of people jumped to my fence and was like, yo, Wayne was on that uh, Destiny Child remix. Like then, that, that soon, there was that point happened. Wayne took off. Like right around the cover I did that was full with Beanie. That's when he took off, and he never looked back. Yeah, he became never. Little Wayne. But it was like, you know, that's the that's the beauty of hip hop. You never know. Completely. What's going on with Wayne's face though? Word. Well, they said he had an operation or something. That's, that's what, what I thought, right? Yeah, yeah. Is it, are people like make, trying to make it the, seem like it's more? The thing is, I was, I was gonna say they said, but in my head, they said is what I saw in the comments in. Who knows what the fuck they yeah, know? Yeah, I haven't yeah, seen yeah, like yeah. an official thing. I haven't heard him say it. It looks like that. I hope it that's looks what like it it's is. been a few weeks though, right? Like, 
Well, he could have taped some of those episodes, and that was the whole thing, too. That was the situation. Yeah, because I'm like, wait, what? You know, the first time I seen it come across the social media, I'm just like, that, what, do we, do we, what, do we, yeah. but you know what's crazy? You know? Like, uh, we rely on TMZ. Uh, well, I thought of another thing too was someone with TMZ. Remember TMZ pronounced him dead. TMZ, oh, TMZ yeah, killed yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was at, I was I was at South by Southwest. Uh, an office. So crazy. I'm running around like Fader Fort. That was the big like. Uh, it was not the official South by thing, but they built this whole thing. Yeah. So I'm literally backstage. And I'm barely, you can't get a signal. You're like in Austin. It's like it's hit and miss. Convention like stand by this tree. Yeah. Stand by this tree. You might get a signal. So they saying Lil Wayne's dead. Uh, the, it's starting to spread. That they're saying Lil Wayne died. Solange comes up to me. Pharrell comes up to me. Everybody's, I'm, the, I'm supposed to be the media guy. I'm yeah, supposed to know if he's like, alive oh. or not. So I'm just <laughs> like, I think he's alive. Like I'm just like, I, I, I just seems a little sketchy to me. I think like, I uh, trust my gut. I think he's alive. I don't. I don't have a signal, da, 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 but thankfully Damn. he was alive. But it's funny because, like, you know, that's the thing with Wayne. I think we're always kind of always concerned about Wayne about certain things, like with the lean, with the cup, and this. And yeah, is that, is that this, what like, they killed him for? Was first uh, the lean? Oh, the seizures at the time. Remember Ross had yeah, one yeah, too. Yeah, I remember yeah. when Ross had one, and I hit him on Twitter, and then he hit me back. Like the first time he he had communicated since it. He hit me up like big homie, you know, MMG power oh, circle, da, 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 da. <laughs> and that that went on TMZ. It was like so. It was like you know that that was the era where the guys were getting seizures and it was just crazy. Yeah, but it was you a know. couple people, yeah. couple times. Yeah, it was kind of a, a weird little time right there. Yeah. But you no, know, most times they got it right. Like they brought the world that, that when Michael Jackson passed, TMZ mm-hmm. did. But it's just funny with hip hop, they did get it wrong that time, and it was just like. Thank you. You're literally like I'm literally in Austin, Texas, with no signal, like trying to figure out if Lil Wayne's alive or not. It's yeah. just like, and people look at you like you're the journalist. You're the you guy. should know if, if Lil Wayne's alive. And like, I'm not I was like I, was like, I, th- I think he's alive. I, I'm with y'all. I'm in the same place. I don't got no reception, man. Can y'all look it up? <laughs> uh, now, 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 now we walked in here, right? Because I, I know you're a man pressed for time, and it's Art Bass week, and there's a lot of yeah, yeah. a lot of stuff to do. I thought that we just talking. We didn't even do an interview, right? Yeah, <laughs> I know. That's what I loved about this, right? So, so you know, Elliot started in 1992. He's old as fuck. (laughs) (laughs) He went to the source in '96. You know, when 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 he walked in the building, I heard Orlando (laughs) playing Drake, and I'm like, no, 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 no. (laughs) we don't play Drake over here. You know what I mean? But it's it's such a pivotal moment for the people who I talk to that don't know anything about really like hip hop, the hip hop music. There are a lot of Latinos out here that don't know much about hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know, Bad Bunny, they know. Uh, but it's like, who's who are you interviewing? Benito. Oh, I'm Benito. interviewing uh, Elliot Wilson. Blank stare. They don't know, right? They don't know. Yeah. About the <laughs> and I'm like, he interviewed Drake. <laughs> oh, oh, whoa. Let me. Like, now they want to know. You know what I mean? And um, you, so you think the Drake one's bigger? The biggest one, right? That was I the think, debate. Well, well I the think Jay-Z, the, is the Jay Z one or the Drake the biggest one? To, for me, the debate. For me, it would be a Jay Z, right? Um, I would say the Jay Z because yeah. it was like a documentary. It depends when it dropped what you him. like. <laughs> it was definitely like a moment. I remember it. But the Drake one definitely put you in front of yeah. the what Drake men, one. Got, the children. Drake one got me like the newer generation. Yeah, I that's the kids. Men, women, I was, you know, also just like the young athletes. I remember I was, I was up at Rock Nation doing something, and all of a sudden, like you know, because they got the sports kit, the sports dudes do so. Like some dudes, like twenty one, he's a linebacker for fucking the Seahawks and some yeah. shit. He's walking by, and he's looking at me like. Holy shit! Like this kind of interview, Drake. It's just like, <laughs> so it's like that kind of person, like the young athletes uh-huh. that fuck with Drake. You know what I'm saying? The young athletes, Absolutely, like that yeah. was the thing, whatever. And then you also didn't have. Like, I know you guys talk about Nipsey, like the Nipsey dynamic. It's just like to know Nipsey and Nipsey's no longer here. It's like and you have these like historic moments with him when and living in California now because I live in Venice and I move around California a lot. Okay. Um, the emotion involved with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? The loss and pain of losing him and um, how fans react to me of that and, like, connecting me to him. And, you know, you almost have to deal with their remorse of it or you know, their sadness of him not being there at times. And it's, it's a lot of weight to carry. So I think a lot of those, a lot of ways, to me, those three are the most impactful in a lot of different ways, the Drake, the, the Nipsey, and, um, and Jay-Z. But, you know, yeah, Drake, beyond step. That's why when I, when I did make the mistake of being critical of him publicly... <laughs> It wasn't cool because he's he's been anti media his whole career, but if anybody in media he's shown love to and given access to, it's me. Right. So it's a tricky thing right now in the world where it's like, if you say something publicly, it gets its own footing and and everybody gets behind it. So it's important to like keep that same energy, right? If I'm not going to be critical to him in our conversation and say something that that he already knows I feel this way about, for me to just go to social media and say it and everybody goes crazy. 
is is a sucker move. So I apologize for it, and you know I think we're getting back to a better space. But yeah. you know everybody's not above criticism. But I do think in this era, it's like it's very tricky about two things of like because I saw it the other day. Even Nori was saying, uh, Cameron was saying with Nori and Joe Budden, it was like, you know, you guys said you wasn't dissing me, but blah, blah. Nori said. I apologize to him, but now I got to apologize publicly. Like, that's right. the tricky thing. Whatever you do here, you also got to then do it publicly. Yes. Because that's the way the world is right now, right? Like, to do it in purpose, like, oh, my bad, my G on the phone. It's just like, and then the world thinks we're still bang, bang, bang. Yeah. It's like, you got to do both things. You got to do things publicly, and you got to do things personally but are you everybody's watching. You know? But realistically speaking, like, you mm -hmm. know, be, being as connected as you are, knowing as many people as you are, are you supposed to have to get the clearance from everybody? Like, it's a... A full feature, like no, not the clearance, but, know, just, but just to keep it a hundred. And if I don't do that, mm -hmm. then I could understand him standing on film like I came out of nowhere it was and played him you. and played him to the world. Yes, yeah, you know that's I that's see. what it comes down to. Yeah, you know we're in a different era because like if the world ain't see it, it didn't happen. Exactly, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and then that was the thing. So then we even went. It's funny because then we went back and forth, right? And we had all this personal drama just between us. So when he did jump on academics page and diss me. I was just like, oh, shit, now the world. That's why I said, like, oh, it's go time. That's why I said, I wasn't trying to be tough. It was more just a reaction of, like, like right. oh, so the behind-the-scenes shit is, like, now you want the world to know, oh, you mad, mad. You ain't fucking right. be like, so that's the tricky part. But, you know, that's that's just the way the game is right now. It's crazy. You know, Drake is strategic. Absolutely. Right? Like he's, Absolutely. And I feel like, you and know. And I've never been on his bad side, especially in this era. And that's the thing, too, like, it's, it's so crazy about my life, like, to lament poor me for a second, right? So, <laughs> um, you know, you go through life like you grow, like you go through, th you know, you want therapy and things like that. You know, I've been blessed that I was such a crazy life. So it just sounds crazy. Like, how you go to your therapist? Like, what's going on with you? Well, I have a beef with Drake and the world's <laughs> mad at me. Cause the, and then I had an argument with Jay-Z. And it, it's just like, it just, your world just seems fucking fake. Yeah. And it's just like, who's there that like... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Deal with relate. you on some real you shit. It's no, like, you don't have no real You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Jay Z yeah. hurt my feelings and Drake has irated me. And uh, <laughs> I always wonder what. And my wife, like. Danielle Smith, is this. And like, it's yeah, like, yeah. Yo, what? Nigga, like, what? Poor you. <laughs> poor you. It'll cost you 180, that my guy. Yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. one hour therapy session. Yeah, now nah, we're doubling this one up. <laughs> I always wonder what it would be like to listen to like the psychologist water break room. You know, it's like, oh man, listen, this lady. Telling me about this bullshit, <laughs> you know, she's really having no, a hard then, time. Then, then you try not to tell them if it's a famous person. You try to tell them it's not the famous person, but then you can't tell your content. real truth to them. But then it's like, what are you doing? Like, you, then it's a puzzle. It's like, am I playing a game? Like, yeah. this black rapper from Brooklyn who's <laughs> millionaires, I piss me. Yeah. Off. Like, it's yeah. just like I don't know. It's, it's just yeah, a it's not thing. even realistic. No, you but know, I actually have a really good. <laughs> it's why I have a really good therapist now, finally, because I actually asked somebody in the business. He, who uh, this therapist helped and for the first time i was like vulnerable enough to be like yo my dog like who is your like can i yeah. and she wasn't even taking on more patients but she patients this sounds all crazy <laughs> clients i say um and then she took me on so i do have a good uh, therapist now but i don't know how i got into that but it's just yeah when you think about life like that when it's like you're blessed to be in certain situations it's just like you're dealing with real things but because of people's perception of famous people and success like you know, Jim Jones used to always joke about that. He'd be like, I'm not famous, but all the famous people know me. Mm. And I feel like that's me. Yeah. I'm still not really famous. Like you said, is it Ellie Wilson? But then you can say one thing, and then it starts to paint a yeah, picture for the yeah. person. Yeah. So it's like, it's weird to be, like, not famous, but so connected to famous people. And in this world where we're so even more driven by celebrity than we ever have been, you know, it's tricky. Yeah, and it's, you know, like, there's all the different communities of people that, um, you know, pay attention to certain things, you mm -hmm. know, like out here in South Florida, it is a heavy Latino community where a lot, like I noticed when I first moved out here, I'm like, everybody knows who Benny the Butcher and Conway the Machine is. <laughs> you know what I mean, I'm playing it. They're like, what, what, who's this? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and you really figure out that they really don't know much aside from Drake, the big Lil pop Wayne, yeah, you know pop what I mean? Stuff, it's yeah. a, a little Baby and it's like everything else. It's like, who, who's that? Who's that? And you get surprised <laughs> by that. But they, that is the, the real thing. As soon as somebody sees your face, it's, oh, i seen that guy before. Yeah. i seen him. So, like, you got that face that's yeah. that's been out Rose there for so long. I'm next to your hero. Long. I'm the guy next to your hero. Yeah. So it's like, oh, wait, who's that guy? He's next to my hero. I always see him next to the important people type yeah. of thing. So it's interesting. What about your upbringing mm. made you this? 
who you are today. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Therapy time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you know what I'm saying? I, it's funny because I did a thing with, um, I started doing business with Patreon, just direct with them. And we did this whole um, conference where I did a speech and like I really approached it from like, let me try to unpack some things about my life that I don't like to talk about. So I, I like to always focus on my career, right? So I like to always, when I would talk about my life, I'd always talk about, Oh, then I went to, you know, the source yeah. and I did this, like, like Start, from the career there. point, from the point, like being 21 and getting into the business in 1992 and hip hop and independent journalism, go to the source, go to double XL, tell my hero like business story. But outside of that, Elliot Wilson Jr., Woodside Projects, Apartment 1A, can't go get water in the middle of the night because you're going to see some roaches, you know, dad wanted me to be a professional baseball player. That was his dream. Um, uh, I thought it was my dream. 16, I didn't want to play anymore. I quit. He called me the P word. I was mad. I wanted to be a sports writer after that, sportscaster, and landed on hip hop, hip hop journalism. So I only wanted to be like Derek Jeter. I thought I was going to be Derek Jeter until I was like 16. Yeah. Biracial shortstop superstar yeah, 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 of the New yeah, York yeah. Yankees because that's what my daddy told me I was going to be. That's, that's Big dream. And, <laughs> and no, then no I pressure. thought I was going to be Howard Cosell after that or, you know, Warner Wolf or whatever sportscaster, Stephen A. Smith probably. Steve, yep. um, and then hip-hop just drew me. And, like, I, I saw the source. I just felt like it was something special. And then I realized, oh, these guys are, like, connected to this music and they get all the music first. And then it was about mm. giving out the mics when the mics mm -hmm. meant something. So that was my career goal. Like, in my early 20s, I was like, I want to be the music editor of the source. I want to get every rap album before it comes out, and I want to give out the mics. That's all I cared about. I didn't care about being editor-in-chief. I didn't care about what my salary was. Yeah. I wanted to be, like, the, the voice of hip-hop that had every rap album and gave the mics out. Switching, switching from sports into music, what was the segue for that? Like, who gave you your first shot in the music industry where you were like, man, you know what? I got a shot here. I could do this. This is something I want to be Sasha in. Sasha Jenkins, uh, um, who's an incredible uh, director right now. He uh, works at Mass Appeal. He's a boss at Mass Appeal. Um, he directed uh, a lot of great stuff. Uh, Biz Markey, recent documentary. Okay. Uh, Louis Armstrong, a lot of amazing projects. Rick James, you can look him up. Sasha Jenkins, S-A-C-H-A -A Jenkins. You yeah, know where Rick James yeah. is from. Yeah. Right? Like Buffalo, yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Yeah, he gets into that, that. Story. breaks yeah, yeah, yeah. it down. Oh, yeah, <laughs> never that story. So I met Sasha. Sasha, I wanted to get down with the source. I didn't know that there was an industry, so I sent my little pitches, and they rejected me and sent me a letter back. You know, dear applicant, fuck you. We didn't pick you, and then they picked other people. And then I was going to Keras One show by myself, uh, 1992 in New York City, and I met Sasha Jenkins, and I met another guy, Haji Akiba Day. And they had an independent uh, New York newspaper called Beatdown, independent magazine. So that early 90s was the era of independent hip-hop magazines. Wow, okay. We had uh, uh, Beatdown back then. There was Rap Sheet. That was from California. Rap Sheet. So they were battling. Now, like, who's the official hip-hop newspaper? The East Coast had Beatdown, and the West Coast had Rap Sheet. <laughs> and then there was other stuff like Herb Magazine, um, Straight From The Lip, Flavor Magazine, all these different independent magazines. Um, so I joined those guys in 1992, Sasha and Haji. I became the music editor. Um, I interviewed Cool G Rap on Election Day, 1992. Yeah. It was um, the original George Bush against George, uh, Bill Clinton. Mm. Clinton won. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I remember like I was in a political science class that morning, and I didn't pay attention. I was just like, I hate school. I hate college. I, I got my two-year degree. I'm in Queens College. I'm bored as fuck. It's election day. All I'm thinking about is going to Cold Chillin' Records to interview Cool G Rap. Ooh. I'm so excited. This is like my first big day. Le legend I'm going to speak to. Um, and I walked out of class and then went back to college. That was it. Wow. I was like, this is what I want to do. So, you All know, right. not to romanticize it, but that's actually literally what happened. So, yeah. you know, talk to Cool G Rap and fuck college after that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just a good way to say that. I think Kooji yeah. Rap would be proud. Yeah. 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 That's a hell of a way. You know, that's that's a good way to get into it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> a lot of people have stories that aren't really that. Like, again, <laughs> tell that to your therapist. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's see what they have to say What can it, Elliot man. tell his yeah. therapist? I need a reality show. Like, yeah, what yeah, can yeah, Elliot yeah. tell his therapist? Yeah. It's, it's such a difficult <laughs> life, Mr. Wilson. Uh, people Mr. tune in. Drake is irate at you. Yo, to have beef with Drake in this era is insane. I just want to talk to you. Like, it's, it's yeah. people are crazy. Like, people who up on you be like, yo, Elliot, 
they pull up in the car, you're like, yo, Elliot, yo, fuck Drake, man. I got your back, baby. Fuck Drake. That's so right, baby. Like, beep, beep. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And then like, they turn back up there. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. 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 Sometimes we laugh, sometimes we laugh. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But no, it's just it's crazy how the world magnifies things now. It's just like, wow. Like I've had beef. No, like I've been this a long time, right? I, I've had beef with artists, but to have beef with artists in the modern era. Yeah. When this guy's like the most popular guy on the motherfucking planet, but whether it, you love him or hate him. But you hear Charlemagne insane. say the diabolical genius, right? 50 Absolute, Cent. Absolutely. You, got beef with, you had beef with 50 Cent. I don't know what it's going <laughs> on right now. So I want to know, no, is there no, any no. truth to his story me that, and, that... Me 50 Cent have the most one-sided beef in hip-hop where he hates me and I love him. <laughs> is, there, is there any truth... Is there yeah, any man. truth to it love where he said Cent. that... I love 50 Cent. He said that you did an interview with his enemies and that they... Yes. They ran in your house and forced you to do this interview well, or something like right that? to it. Okay, all right. Yeah. 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 R.I.P. Uh, Chaz. Okay, so. Oh, man, for the record. Okay, so. Well, to take it back, let's take it back. XXL. A lot of the success came from this position of, like, uh, supporting 50 Cent. Never saw nothing like the 50 Cent phenomenon from the wow, beginning. Yeah. When he came after the shooting, doing the underground shit, the mixtape shit, killing the game, smoking it, mixtapes, boom, boom, boom. I remember going in the office, to my office, walking back, everyone's playing the Guess Who's Back, everyone's playing mm. 50 mm-hmm. Cent on mixtapes, Cutmaster C, Wankster. Blah, blah. Wankster. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's just, bu- even before Wankster, actually, before, before yeah. Eminem, before, I'll take you through the whole thing. Yeah. So before Eminem, just that post shooting, Cause I would go, I would go to Canal. I was, I wanted to be so equipped with everything with the underground. So I literally would send interns if I couldn't go myself three or four times a week. Give me every mixtape on Canal Street. Mm, I would pull smart. money out like I was a drug dealer. The whole XSL year was like, make a run. I would take five thousand dollars out of my account. And I have five. I have a couple thousand on the desk. Here's a hundred here. Here's this. I would get people crystal bottles when issues would sell well. Like I was living like a fake drug dealer. Like, that's how I was running. Yeah, I was like, we're gonna run our shit like we're the number one when we're not. That's fun like, as fuck hell. the source. That's, I was like, that's fun we're though, number man. one. We're the best. We're gonna be number one. We function like champions. We're fucking number one. You know, like we're selling like a hundred thousand copies. They're selling like three hundred and fifty thousand copies. <laughs> Didn't give but a this fuck. is what it takes, all this right? This is what it takes. Let's Mentality. Yeah. So I, you couldn't get a mixtape past me. You couldn't get a song past me. Never saw a guy like 50 Cent, that movement with those mixtapes, um, Bill what built to get to the Slim Shady mm-hmm. moment, right? So, um, And then we embraced him. Chris X, a writer, a great hip-hop writer, knew Sha Money, Haitian Connections Shot back Money. in the day. Started doing big profiles of him. Every issue, get 50 in the book somehow. Get him in the book. Get him in the book. Because yeah. he's the guy. He's, that era, I remember. And he has. Yeah. He always had something to talk. And he would about. show up. Yeah. Always on time. Whatever it was. But so we kept supporting him, supporting him, supporting him. Then we hit this whole turning point of like, oh shit, he's signing with Eminem, and Eminem is, and so they don't fuck with us because mm-hmm. the people before me at Double XL had a beef with Eminem. They had yeah. called yeah. him out on some white boy can't be yeah. king of rap can't be white type Vanilla Ice post Vanilla Ice type shit. So. Moment I took over Double XL was trying to like squash that beef and like I knew Eminem was Eminem. It's a tough bird, so I couldn't. Right I, so I inherited that. Yeah. So it was interesting to us when okay, the guy that we're supporting all day goes with them. Is that gonna like repair that relationship? Yeah, is that gonna conflict? The and, ulti- and ultimately, it did. You know, and then we had a whole sit down. Uh, me and Paul Rosenberg with my guy Noah Callahan Bever, um, who does Idea Generation right now, and. Um, that led to that M. Dre 50 cover, yeah. which was historic. Huge. Yeah. Huge. Which changed iconic, everything. Iconic. Iconic. Iconic, iconic, iconic is yeah. the word. Great, is it, what's better? That one or the Death Row Vibe cover? That's the debate of what the greatest hip-hop magazine cover is. It's <laughs> tough. Yeah. Talk about with the silhouettes and the colors. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But my guys were all together. I don't know about the whatever shooting with the, the photos was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my guys. Was, yeah. Well, yours because there was probably no Photoshop. There was no Photoshop. There we go. Yeah. So we, but anyhow, so as you know, so to fast forward, I'm sorry, you want to get to the I conflict. Know. So <laughs> yes, I do. Um, <laughs> you know what it is though, it mu- much less the conflict, much more like if we're gonna sit there and talk about Drake beef and how he's iconic. I, I think that that Fifty Cent's the guy. That's the guy that like when, you, when the you're guy and he's with so him, much a part of my success. Yeah, yeah but I, again, and then so he comes out. So they do that. And I remember even with that, it's like we knew we were coming with that bomb, right? So. We knew we had this MJ50 thing. 
Um, and it was in January. We didn't put out an issue. We like did a double issue at the end. So the source mm. came out, and that's when they did Ja Rule on the cover, and they had the poster. Mm. You, remember, see, you ever see the poster where they're breaking me in half and they're breaking Eminem in half? So that came out before that because they knew that was coming. I miss magazines like right? that, man. R.I.P. Chris Lighty. Man. They pushed the issue back. So we pushed the issue back. We dropped that historic cover right on top of Get Rich or Die Trying. 50 Cent comes out, 800,000 mm. first week. Second week, 800,000. We'll never see those numbers again. And then... He's got the mixtapes. So reason why we always kind of always, like, you can never take none away from 50. And again, he could hate me forever. I don't care. It's all love. But I, I will always praise him because I've never in hip-hop seen mm. the guy be the biggest in the world, pop, mainstream, and be the hottest nigga in the underground. Mm. Yeah. And, and then he's selling you T-shirts and fucking <laughs> tank top brassiers. And, yeah, and yeah. Bulletproof and, like, tank tops. and then he puts out I mean? banks and buck and game and everything. Yeah. Like that wow. run was insane. Was and then it's like, yeah. and then we put him on the cover six months later because um, he's the hottest guy and he puts this Benzino illustration in about his son <laughs> and then Benzino comes up to the office so there was static with that. Oh, so I would, I would catch all this drama because 50 is 50 and I would give, I would play with him and like help him do what he's going to do but it's like, He's 50. He's a thorough dude, and he's got thorough dudes around him, and he's got a bulletproof vest, and he's running around. But I'm Ellie. I'm not trying to be that. I'm not trying yeah. to hold me down. So yeah, chill out, I inherited a lot of drama just doing that business with him at the same time. So it got to a point where also then he would air out people on our platform Oof. that would then have problems, and yeah. they would go to other situations. So one of that was Black Hand and Chaz, who used to manage him, and the whole situation. So yes. We ran something, and then um, because I had some history with a member of that crew that the brother had went to school with me, they had went to my mama's house in the projects and had told them, hey, you know, Elliot, we want to talk to him. Do you have his number? Blah, 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 blah. And my parents don't understand nothing, so it's like, you know, hey, EJ, call. You know, they call me EJ. Yeah. Call me, yeah. Good friend, friend, call me. Blah, blah. So I just flipped out because I'm like that that that's just, that's just not cool. Like that mm. that's not my world. Like you got a problem. Like everybody knows where I'm at. I'm at that office every day. The office is the, the office building address is in the magazine. I live across the park. I'm right here. So then I met with those gentlemen after that at a restaurant, and they was explaining to me the problems and the conflicts. Yeah. And I was like, okay, you know what? They had built certain momentum to tell their story. I was like, okay, now I got to tell this story because I allowed them to, like, I allowed Fifth to air them out and do X, Y, Z. So mm. that's journalism. When I did M. Dre 50, two months after that, we did Murder, Inc. on the cover. Everybody forgets because yeah. they, they got invaded by the feds and the yeah. whole shit. And I remember Chris Lighty was like, don't do that cover. Like, why are you doing that cover? We're going to pull our advertising. Don't do that cover. But, but I was like, yo, they're, they're, they're the biggest story. This is the cover Chris, to do, yeah. They got raided by the fucking feds. This is two months after MJ50. So as a journalist, you tell both sides of the story. I told both sides of the story. I called Fifth and told him I was going to tell their story. He hung up on me. So that's when it started to go left. Mm -hmm. But it was never 100 from jump because he never rocked with me. He rocked. Everything was done. Drew Vanessa, again, who runs Double XL to this day. 50 Cent business went Drew Vanessa. Cash Money business went Drew Vanessa. <laughs> Simple as that. But I will never ish on it because I respect Fifth. We know who Fifth is. Yeah. He's a real one. And so much of my legacy at Double XL and what we created was 50 Cent. Can't deny it. Wow. And I respect that and I appreciate that. Word. Whoa, well, well, well. You know what I mean? See, that guy does that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what it is? It's like you hear the stories of narrative. You hear other narratives of it. And you, you always got to sit back and you're like, now I, now I want to know the real story. No, I would say we never were cool, though. That's the, that was say, like, when people say that, they get caught up in this hype of, like, I betrayed him. Didn't betray him. We never were cool. He never fucked with me. We did great business. Yeah. We changed the world together. And also then, in the last part I'll say is I think that he didn't like that then after Double XL, when everybody thought I was over, I started Rap Radar with Paul Rosenberg, another person he did minutes with. And then he had this 50 at the time. So it just was like, oh, mm -hmm. shit. Like, you know, like he felt like, well, you know, why is this? Why is not he part of this? Like, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. He said on one of the mixtape records, if I ain't got no money with you, then fuck you. It's just like, mm -hmm. that's what it was. So he, This Is 50 was a real thing. Yeah. And Rap Radar came out as a real thing. 
You know, to me with this blog era shit, like I'm the blog, I'm the I'm the blog era, I'm the blog that survived. I'm the I'm the best motherfucking blog. There we go. That's what I like. Yeah. I knew he was I'm gonna the, talk. I'm the, only, shit, blo- I'm the only blog that survived and became something else, which is one of the greatest rap uh, podcasts out there. Mm, yeah. And my blog still exists. My URL still up there. You go to rapradar.com, you see stuff there. How am I not the greatest blog? Like I respect everybody, and I respect the blog era, but. I came in the blog era game and I changed the game. Why I say I'm the GOAT is because I created the greatest independent rap magazine, Ego Trip. I created the greatest rap magazine, Double XL. I created the greatest rap blog, Rap Radar. Come on. Rap Radar podcast, I'll put against anybody. Like, what do you, who, talk to me nicely. Like, I don't want to talk. Like, like, what? And and, 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 uh, Vanessa Satin, Bonsu Thompson, Noah Callahan Bever, B Dot. I put people on. I mm-hmm. build. I build careers. I put SK. I put on. All right. I helped him to like. So come on, man. Yeah. I'll also, yeah, a, yeah. a lot of track look, record. A lot, <laughs> a lot of people don't survive Fifty Cent's wrath when he's mad. You know what I mean? Right, and right. You obviously are. Obviously, your beef isn't like that. Um, but it's not you know, a beef. It is what it it's is. just he don't fuck with me. He never has. I, you know what? A, that's not I a beef. Fuck with him for it. Not a that beef, he doesn't a fuck a beef with is, you. A beef is not that somebody don't fuck with you. Honestly, to yeah. me, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's not a beef. He don't fuck with me. He never fuck with me. Absolutely. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> That's not a beef. Yeah. A beef is when, like, there's the actual. We're both engaged. beef is when yeah. I see exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Or when we did something to each you. other. We, yeah. we never. The, I told you the dealings. The Chaz Dillon was that. And then we talked. It, and then it made no noise. I did the interview with them. You know, and R.P. Chaz. He, he's no longer here. R.P. Chaz. But it's like, yo, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a thorough street dude. To pretend I'm being nothing, not. I could have gone that route. Like honestly, like come on, man. I've been in this business thirty years. Yeah. You don't think I get niggas for my projects things, to man. hold me down? I've seen some things. You don't think I could have a gun in my desk and all that type? Like I don't. I didn't want to be that person. I chose not to be that person. You could get caught up in this business and try to out- act outside your character. Mm. Everybody got somebody that could go on a dummy mission for you, especially when you got paper. Right. So you make a decision. Do I want to be that person? Do I want to engage in this these rules here? <laughs> Act outside no. my character, try to become something I'm not. I'm not that. Yeah. I respect y'all who are that. Right. You know, yeah. you South but, Side, you South Side, I'm Woodside. It's all good. It's all, it's all love. That's let, all let, let me be, be me. Let me do <laughs> me, my boy. Yeah. And that's I hear it be. though. I hear some. You know, that this is probably the second time I heard the tone in you that. I know that there's something else there about that upbringing that you know that. There's that toughness to it, that roughness to it. There's like, you know, you know how you, I'm, you were running no, around. No, not tough, but I'm not a sucker. No, no, like, no, that's like, exactly. Yeah. So there's something in there. Yeah, so yeah. you're, say, you're sitting like there that. talking about yeah. how you run through, like it's, you got to go get these mixtapes. I'm going to give I you this. We're survive. operating that. Like, if I was a suck ass nigga, how would I survive being as business since 1992? Right. With top names. With, with respect yeah. and with top names. And like, you mm-hmm. said, like, I'm not a sucker. Like, that's an that's easy narrative. Corny, punk, sucker. None of those Whatever. things. Yeah. Am I tough? Am I gangster? No, I'm just I'm just a thorough dude. I'm thorough. I, that's why I love the word thorough to me because it's like it's just being stand up with it. Like thorough could be you can't refuse. You could be it. thorough in that situation of you gotta turn up with that to just be like hold my ground because mm-hmm. shit is right and you in the club and it may go to the level of that and you yeah. gotta be able to defend yourself or know where the exit's at and move that way. Right, or thorough right. is just like. Standing on your own shit about this is my opinion. I got to accept what comes with that and rectify those things. And that's the thing, too. It's like, yo, artists aren't supposed to like media. Like, like it's a <laughs> twisted thing too. now where it's like <laughs> now because motherfuckers have adapted to media and made media seem sexy. Like media is the cool thing. Media was not the cool thing. <laughs> Media was You're like, yo, wrong, yo, yo, cur- corny ass journalist, herb ass nigga. Like, you, who you to tell me my album's <laughs> whack? That was you ain't a rapper. The, yeah, you right. It's just like right. we was herbs. We were supposed to be suckers. Like, yeah. we, I was like, I'm not a sucker, but I, I'm not a rapper. But I don't think your shit is good. Yeah. And I'm gonna explain to you why. Not just gonna sit here, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you why this is good, and I'm gonna tell you. You know what I'm saying? Like, that wasn't cool. <laughs> media is cool now. Media yeah. wasn't. Cool. I'm old enough to know when media was not cool. Not cool. <laughs> You know, yeah. only for af- only wild. for the only for the directing of like what Charles Barkley is, which is like okay, star player. Then you get to be the color commentator talking about the game. That direct kind of the uh, lineage. But outside of that, to be just immediate to like, there's, there's a whole generation. I mean, you guys are doing great work, but like, let's say younger people that are inspired by you, it's like the idea that this is cool and this is what's going to make me whatever. It's like we didn't have a world that existed like yeah, that. Yeah, it's true. 
It's Howard not, Cosell had a, a name, but he was still vilified. Like he he wrote a book that literally said, "I never played the game," playing into the idea of how everybody was shitting on him yeah, because he, he was Howard it. Cosell to do whatever. It's like now I saw that whole, saw whole lineage. So yeah. yeah, up until very recently, you never saw the journalist. Yeah, they never yeah, used to tweet. Too. You never you were used supposed to, to not yeah. to. Yes, that was all. They point. definitely yeah. didn't talk as much shit well, you as didn't he be see, talking. Yeah. No, but he be right. talking that shit. You no, can hear it. But in he, him. No, but even Double XL, I would no, talk no, that I, shit. I but you, saying. but you wouldn't see me though. Yeah. That was the whole point. Yeah. It was like I used to. I was like doing the Charlie's Angels shit. I was like, you don't see Charlie. <laughs> I was like, you are gonna feel this? You gonna feel the voice? You are gonna feel the POV? But you're never gonna see me. I'm not going to that party. I'm not going to Puffy's party. I'm going to random strip clubs in Queens that you're not, not going to the see puppies me. party. You heard that, right? <laughs> yeah. right? You heard I that. I right? was coming. Yeah. yeah. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Back in the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Wait, nah, wait, wait. So, wait. Right, just right. fuck it, right? So uh-huh. Speaking of Diddy, you wanted to talk about the big Diddy story. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you wanted to talk about it. With um with J. Cole. Oh, I said that one Diddy story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, everybody will talk about Diddy. <laughs> okay, so one of my favorite moments, uh, and Cassie's involved too, so. Oh shit! <laughs> all yeah, love, yeah, all love, the yo, calm, yeah. calm down, man. Everybody, all love to Cassie. Right. All love to everybody involved. Okay, so mm-hmm. just telling the story. So that MTV, so basically the whole, and it's because yeah, Cole eventually rapped about it. So I, don't, yeah. I feel comfortable giving my my little version of it because Cole rapped about it on. <laughs> finally admitted that he had a little scuffle with Puffy. So I didn't see the scuffle, but the story behind it, for my POV, I think is entertaining. So. Um, <laughs> it's MTV VMAs in New York City. I think it's in Brooklyn, which is it was actually Barclays, and I had a board. Of, I had bought a place in five thirty five Dean Street, right near the Barclays before the Barclays opened. I sold it since then, but that was the great first place I ever bought. So let me go ahead and walk on across the street. You know, yeah. Let me check. I was <laughs> no, but I, I I don't think I even really no. I did get in. I did get in, but t- towards the end, I just kind of. Yeah, and then I was like, okay, where's the after party? But it's like after party going to the back to Manhattan, never after party, blah, blah. Okay, boom, I'm Dolo. I think my wife was out of town, so I, I'm with the shits. Like, where's it popping yeah, tonight? Let's like, go. We're in the so city. I'm and I'm Dolo, Dolo Strollo. So um, we find out. I find out there's supposed to be some party at this place, and two chains is supposed to be there. I get to that place, it looks dead, blah blah. Then it's like, no, no, Puffy has this thing at a hotel. Puffy got a party, hotel, blah blah. So I'm like, all right, go. I go for that. I don't really know nobody. I bluff my way something. I come in. I bluff myself. I get somebody recognizes me. Yeah. I get in. I come in. Boom. So it's, fun. it's, it's, it's actually it's a really problematic role. Russell Simmons, Cassie, Puff, J, B, and uh, that might have been it at first on one couch because the, the party's whole, huh. the party's just starting. It's like twelve thirty yeah. one blah blah. So that. I'm like, oh shit, this really is like supposed to be the part. Yeah. Like, oh shit, like that. I found it. Yeah. So because I'm cool with Jay, I get to kind of mill around the little area. So I'm milling around the area and drinking with everybody. I'm not sitting with them. I'm just kind of yeah. lingering in that little section. So you as, can talk as, your shit. As you know what I mean? Go ahead and talk your shit. So I'm just lingering. Nah, as, as the party fills in, I'm like, okay, this seems like it's gonna be an interesting night. Um, so people start to pour in like diff- different entourages and actors and shit. So so. Macklemore comes in. <laughs> hey, don't hit that guy. Hold on, don't do that. <laughs> Yo, his that laugh guy. is epic. This man's laugh is Yo, epic. I can't you know explain how Macklemore was that guy in 2013, man, before he right. went left. Had to be there. So Macklemore comes in, and I and I fuck with Macklemore. Macklemore yeah. used to come up to the Eagle Chip office with B Dot, and I, I was front him back then, but like <laughs> he had his moment. This was his breakthrough. So Macklemore yeah. was like the big pop star. He gives off like mad like youth pastor energy. <laughs> Oh my God. Like, I was trying to figure I've out like what before. is about it uh, about him, but he gives off youth power. He's a energy. good dude, man. Uh, he's a, he's, a, he's good. a good dude, and he, he didn't try to, and he didn't try to hide it being in hip hop. And I, it's, that's Talk really to hard to Talk do, to man. Me. Shout out to Macklemore. So I, don't know I, so him, I but... leave. I leave. Puff, Cassie, Russell, <laughs> JB. Let me go over here and talk to my man Macklemore. Let me chop it up with Macklemore. Because yeah. of what you said. Come on. Like he don't feel like he's comfortable enough to like you know be up in this area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, and I see him lingering around. I'm like, let's go talk we to him. Go What's up, hey, boy? Man. You good? Yeah. Yeah. Was, I'm gonna <laughs> chop it up. Macklemore having some deep conversations. Boom, boom, boom. Me and Macklemore in the corner. Boom, boom. Half hour goes by. Blah, blah. All of a sudden, I hear boom, 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 boom. I hear like, I hear, yeah, like disruption. Oh in the, in shit! The... It's like, whoa, whoa. 
You know, you hear like, you, we've been to clubs. Yeah, you know when something goes down. A little, du- a little dust up just happened. Uh-huh. A little dust up. The music little, skips a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, let it clear out, blah, blah. Then the, I start to walk over to the thing. I see Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> where your man's right here. What's your name? Is he? Orlando. Orlando. So where Orlando is, Kendrick Lamar there. He's got the little uh, New York hat with 40 ounce van, the hat he had. Shout he out to 40. Yeah. Shout out to 40. He's like this little th- First of all, he's in a club. Kendrick Lamar does not go he to go, shit. Yeah, yeah. So, you already- so Kendrick Lamar sitting in the thing, his little legs are swinging. <laughs> he looks happy as fuck. <laughs> I look at K-Dot. I go, yo, K-Dot, what's up, baby? He's like, yo, what's up, baby? He's looking at me. He's just laughing. And I'm just like, I look at the ground. I see like broken glass and blah, blah. I'm just like, I thought like, my mind was like, like, um, that just like fans or somebody oh, yeah. acted up. Or like a female got a little drunk yeah. and they had to they kick baby her out or section and, spilled and got spilled out. Yeah. So I'm like, so I'm looking at Kelly, yo, niggas was tripping. So the guy's like, ah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So that, so that, <laughs> um, then I still sitting over there. Punch is over there. Punch, Punch will tell you that Punch loves telling the story. He tries to link it to Punch from TD. He loves the uh-huh. story. He could, he's going to do a documentary about it one day. Shout out to Punch. <laughs> um, no, but I didn't realize that there was a dust up where, you know, Cole had walked in there with Eve and whatever happened with his conversation with Puff went left. And I heard he pushed Puff down, you know, uh, Puff had pushed Cole down. And then what I will say is uh-huh. whatever little tat a tat they had, I never saw security get somebody up out of there so quick. Mm-hmm. So security cleared out Dreamville quickly. Mm-hmm. So by the time I came back, all you saw was the broken glass and the em- uh, empty couch, like empty wait a couches, second, yeah. and then was back to party. And it was like so shout I, out to so, Diddy Security. So I literally mm-hmm. missed the whole the whole dust up, and then I'm just like, and then Puffy's looking at me kind of crazy because he's like <laughs> frazzled a little, you know, because he's yeah. also like, you know, you look at me, it's like, oh, he's the journalist guy that he's does he know oh, what happened, blah shit. blah. So he's kind of looking at me crazy after night. So I'm like, blah, blah. so I'm like, all right, this is getting kind of weird. So I kick it with them in their section for a while. I'm like, all right. You know, this, this is a crazy night. I don't know what's yeah. going on, but, but I didn't even know at the time what happened. So I start to leave. And then I start to walk out. Here come Drake. And his entourage. And me and Drake are cool back then. You really found, <laughs> you really, <laughs> you really found the spot. I let me found just the tell spot. You. Drake yeah. comes in yeah. with CJ. All the, the uh, Toronto guys are all coming in. Blah, blah. And Drake's a little distracted because I guess Drake had heard Cole had gotten into it. So he's walking into a little battlefield. He's walking into like, a little heated. He's what's walking the energy going to be like? He's a little tight. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, he's walking in, and then all his boys is like roping me in. So I'm like, I can't leave now. The, the, the Toronto guys is here. <laughs> blah, blah. So I'm all in the fake six-guy thing. And then, like, we're running around the thing. And then at the time, I guess he wasn't good with Rihanna. You know, they had the off and on type yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. So Rihanna has her own section. And she's turned up. And she's like, fuck. Showing look, 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 look. out. Yeah. And then he's trying to avoid oh, her yeah, section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, yeah, 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 yeah. He's avoiding yeah. her section. I'm like, this is the most insane part of this. And now we're like at 2, 3 in the morning. So then um, I finally leave them and I go back to the area. Then when Jay's at, but, but I see Justin Timberlake. So Justin Timberlake. Oh, yeah. Damn, man. Like, what, what are the name <laughs> dropping? Yeah. Let's going. get the I can't go to therapy. I can't go to therapy. He really can't. I did really before cool. I did the Jay Z black and white um, interview. I did an interview with him in Yankee Stadium. I don't know if you ever saw that clip, so that'll show up. So at that time, that interview had came out. Justin Timberlake is breaking down to me my Jay Z interview at Yankee Stadium. Oh, fire. he's gassing me. Fire. He's telling me the points he liked and the, the when you said this and he said that. But he seemed like a cool he, dude. And he's man. like, and we're gonna sit down and we're gonna have a conversation and we're gonna. <laughs> he's gassing me up. I'm like, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> now I'm hype. It's four in the morning. I'm I'm sober now. I'm like I'm about to interview Justin Timberlake. Mm. So I'm hype. It's like this was an insane night. That was it. Like that was it. So Justin <laughs> this Gassi, ain't the night that Diddy slapped Drake. Did, he yeah. didn't fight. He didn't fight J. Cole and slap Drake <laughs> in the oh, same no, day. Did he? On a I'm just saying. It's a lot of no, shit but I heard that down. Cole that Cole had got kicked out so quick that by the time it ended, Cole was already outside trying to like move forward with the whole situation of like talking to Puff and you know that's why it got yeah. it got squashed quick after that because. I think the way it happened and how quick he got kicked out and the whole thing. Something got like misconstrued that. and they got yeah, separated it got, quick it got, and it's it, like. It, it got separated. But. Yeah. but just to think of all that star power and how crazy that night went and just the waves <laughs> of that. It's like, it's one of the most insane industry yeah, yeah, party yeah, nights yeah. I've been a part of. Like, you could make I I a dope documentary. Into, 
And then like, yo, Macklemore. I was like, you missed it because you was talking to Macklemore in the corners. It's like, Come on, dude. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, poor no, Macklemore. That's, that's a story that you should have somebody animate. Yeah, when they do yeah, like for this. sure. No, yeah, really? one of the, one I of just those. pictured it that way. I'm not that's gonna lie. That's actually yeah. what I saw. That's yeah. really and is. then Justin Timberlake walked in. I'm like, what the? Yeah, fuck? No, no. Timberlake, <laughs> once you get to Timberlake, that's when it's insane. No, you, yeah, you, yeah, and he's nah, having a one on one. Me, like, he's really, he, yo, he gassed me up. He's really breaking it down to me. Like he's like, yo, you said this. Yeah, he appreciated that. Like it was game film. Like he was Kobe Bryant. He's like, at the 12 minute mark, you asked Jay about this, and then Jay said he... that, and that made me feel like I don't really fuck with me, but I think I'm gonna sit with you. Ooh. That's just, yeah, that's high up. praise. It's gassing me up. I was like, do 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 high praise. Do 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 do. As Justin Timberlake, even to this day, ever done a real interview? That's exactly. the thing, right? Exactly. Right? Like yeah, that, right? Isn't that crazy? He'll do yeah. a talk show before he does an interview, right? You know. So, so he gassed me that night. He's like, oh, so JT, I'm still ready, baby. I'm right. here, hey. Hey. <laughs> bro. You do yeah. so much yeah. amazing work. <laughs> We go, let's you go really, happen now. Let's go. You really do so much amazing work. Uh, Adam22 recently made a comment saying that he feels like you're too old to do the, the run and gun <laughs> con- concert content. Oh, he said that or yeah, Drake like, said that? Uh, I thought it was Adam22 that said that. Am I, am I mistaken? Well, Drake there? first. And he okay. jumped in the bandwagon. Oh, okay. like yeah, so, but, but here goes what I see. And, and huh? no, no disrespect to Adam22, but we yeah. got tears. Right, you've been in this game a long time. You've got the illest interviews under your belt. You know, what I mean, we got we had the opportunity uh, to speak with Vlad as well, yep. uh, bootleg Kev. You know, yeah. we 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 love sitting down with the the people that are actually putting in work, of course. Uh, and not to say that Adam uh, doesn't put in work, but it's not hard. the blog. I, I, I I'm not buying into the belief system that you're too old to do it unless you feel like you're too old to be out there doing that. No, I, the Rolling Loud thing was fun to me. I feel like Rolling Loud is like the rap Super Bowl, like. Chaotic for what it is. So, mm-hmm. um, the guy, as I said, the guy Tariq, one of the owners, hit me up. Um, oh, Tarek. I'm sorry, it's Tarek. It's not Tariq. Tarek. I believe it's the proper way to say his name. Um, hit me up, and I was just like, you know, I'm honored. Like he went to a manager. We got it right, and I was like, yo, this is dope. I've heard a lot about this event, yeah. and like, I want to see the new generation. I want to come into it that way. And, like, I got to kick it with the Yes Jewels of the world. But I also met, Shout like, yes, Jules. the young brother from our generation and, like, the younger journalist, too. And Speedy was there. And, um, Tough. you know, all the all the people that are out there. It's like, yo, I want to document culture. Like, that's the thing. It's like, you want to put me in this patch of, like, I'm a legend, so I should just be doing this. It's like, no, I want to. Yeah. I want to bump my head if I have to. Like I don't. I, I'm not limited that way. Like I felt like that was fun. That was cool. I would like to do it again. So no, I don't. If you have a problem with that, tough. I disagree. Like whatever your perception is, Adam Twenty Two I know was very heavily influenced by me. Like he told J Cole it's on video about a lot of his influence in terms of what he does. The hip hop side was by me and the Double XL era and stuff. But you know I appreciate the Double XL era too. But that doesn't completely define me for the rest of my life. So. If you think I can't do X, Y, Z because I'm not living up to your perception of what I was supposed to be with, I was your double XL editor, you know, you tough. It's like, that's yeah. not what I'm about. I'm about to try to evolve and figure out what my next steps are. And like one part of it, more importantly, is that I like to go out and get the story. Part of what made Rap Radar successful is going to get the story. You know, Jay-Z interview came where finally he says, yes, get on a plane and go to California. We get on a plane and go to California. Will Smith finally says, yes, we got to go to Budapest, Hungary. We go to Budapest, Hungary. Yeah. Drake finally says, yes, we got to go to this house in Toronto, Canada. We go through the border. You know you ain't got no priors, but you still feel nervous. <laughs> you got to go through this country to get to see this guy, and then you get in. That's and it. you go talk to him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that. I like <laughs> That's that. the craziest part to me. It's like, like this guy's another country. Right. Like, I remember we had the first OVO Fest. I was just like, yo, this is crazy. Like, This guy's the top guy in rap. And we got to go to another country yeah. to watch him rap. People forget. And they may not let me in. And I know I got no felonies. But you know how it is if you're a person of color. <laughs> yeah. We're paranoid. Like, we know we ain't got no yeah. felonies. But we don't, we don't you, think you we have felonies. We're like, yeah. but when we go to the border, it's like, why are you here, sir? Like, uh, Shit, why am I here? You drink, 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 drink. Yeah. And drink. You know, I'm from <laughs> Buffalo. I had a lot of problems at that border. Right, right? That's, like, that's a yeah. tough border. Yeah, that's that's not an easy border. border. That's actually funny. He said, you go to the border and they ask you, why are you here? And you say, I'm here to interview Drake. And it's like, yeah, I'm sure. Sure, buddy. Yeah, sure, <laughs> buddy. Yeah, <laughs> who else? I'm right? sure you're here Especially to see Drake. Back then, yeah, we're like, calling that's, that's Drake old, right and that's, now. And that's 09 Drake. That's not even right. the Drake now that's like that's a boss true. that'd be like, he could be calling. It's just like, yeah. oh, yeah, Drake did say you're good. But like, he wasn't, 
to that level right. back then. Right. Yeah, he's, 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 he's the prime minister. Now he's the prime minister. Yeah. But back then, it's like OVO year one. No, so. But to go back to the point, I definitely <laughs> don't agree when they say you're too old to do this or to be here or to be there. Screw that. Yeah. First of all, you proved yourself to be anywhere. Any, anywhere <laughs> yeah. you want to go and That's speak ridiculous. to who you want to speak to, you've earned that. You know what I'm saying? So it, it is Thank ridiculous you, to say that, first of all. But also, how are you supposed to continue to evolve and, and, and keep this whole thing going if you're not connected to what's new and what's going on. I don't think they've ever seen nobody continue and do that. That's, that's the issue. Like, Again, I don't have the path. Like, I feel like I've, I've, bro- I've, like, broke these barriers down of, like, that, where it's just, like, it's not just your, like, lip service of, like, oh, this guy's relevant. I'm still important. Like, even what I do with social media, like, I feel like I don't get no credit with that, too. Like, I pioneered the whole, like, documenting hip-hop through social media. Mm. Yeah, Nobody did that before me. That's honestly that's how I found you. I, f- I found yeah. you. Uh, I think it was on Twitter, and I'm not yeah. even on Twitter. Yeah, but I was catching some of the most relevant stuff that I wouldn't wasn't seeing on the other pages. It was Absolutely, like, it was like not deep cuts. It was better than deep cuts, but it was stuff that other pages weren't catching. Like yeah. stuff that you basically cultivated. You thought it was dope out of a yeah, batch my of curation. 15. Yeah. Yes, ju- as a journalist, yeah. And, but it came across like the blog days, like the Tumblr days. Yeah. Not too much context or information, just take in the media and see what it is and, and this is what's dope. Present it to you, yeah. Pre- spreading and saluting culture, not just the t- salacious and the tabloid information. You're yeah, highlighting mostly not that. Highlighting no. the dopeness of hip hop. Yep. And not a lot of people who do that. Not, not a lot of people yeah. who are journalists or bloggers or however you want to put it. They don't still do that. They fall to the low-hanging fruit. They're posting the sexy reds and they're posting the, the you know, the drama. Well, I like the sexy drama. red. But we I'll do yeah. too, but it's salacious. You know what I'm saying. It's, it, it's fun. my it's baby fun. daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the baby in the, in the, yeah, in yeah. the belly. Uh, <laughs> one, one of the things I wanted to ask you, uh, Elliot, just having you here. Yeah. Um, obviously, you're competitive. Uber competitive, some might say. <laughs> But um, but this late in the game because you ha- you've been here for a while, man. You've been doing this thing for quite some time, man. Yeah. Um, what is more, I don't know. Uh, I guess important to you or more fun for you, is it the progress or is it the success? Is it making new progress or is it having the complete success? Man, I I don't feel like I have complete success. I think it's again. I think it's the. Again, again, to go back to what I said earlier, I, I do feel like I'm at this sort of, like, crossroad in my career. Um, and just embracing that, honestly, of, like, I don't know fully 100% what the future looks like, but at the same time, that doesn't, like, make me feel discouraged. You know what I'm saying? It makes me feel motivated to, like, okay, let me figure this out. And I think a lot of times what I represent isn't what's out there, but I feel like it still has value. So what does it look like to, to put that to the forefront? You know, and yeah. to, and to get the right partners and the right backing um, that presents that. So that to me is like, it's the, I just feel a very challenged right now. You know, I feel like yeah. I don't feel like established or I mean, I definitely feel like I'm established, but I don't feel like that's sort of like You're established. Yeah, content of like I could just walk into the sunset and yeah. you know I've done enough. I don't feel like I've done enough. I feel like I want to do more. Um, and I also feel like, again, I'm not opposed to like connecting with the right partners, younger, older, whatever, like to get that vision across and what it looks like and, and understand the challenges that we face now with that situation. Like I get a joy from that. I get a joy from curation, which is what I do with social. Like I have no problem, you know, bringing light to something I think is worthy to the culture that I mean, I have no involvement with my curation game is, is important to me. And my creation game is important to me. I want to contribute. I want to feel like I have a good interview, just like you guys have a good interview. It's just like I want to be yeah. part of that ecosystem of like, yo, watch these guys when they talk to Fat Joe. Watch Ellie. He spoke to blah, blah. I want to be in that conversation. Like, And then you yeah. could, we could judge it off that. So it's not even just even that uber competitiveness. It's just about like, yo, I just feel like that's a fulfillment for me to feel like I can still do great work that's important to people. You know, mm-hmm. that that's motivates me. Like, I, I still love it. Like I still have a passion for the culture and I still love the music and yeah. you know, it's not perfect. Obviously we have a lot of issues about what's going on in culture right now oh, and yeah. what could be improved. But you know, when I, it's funny when I always go back to my older stuff and I look at some stuff sometimes it's like, that is hip hop though. Hip hop is to be critical of our shit mm-hmm. of like, it could be better. Like, why is that not there? Yeah. Like we've always been that that's way. How you, always, that's how we go. I even been Illmatic. It was like, wait, we heard half time and we heard ain't hard to tell. And, Nas only gave us like seven records in a skit. Like, 
Why is Lil Maddox so short? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what people were saying. I remember when Wu Tang and Wu Tang came out. It wasn't that instant thing. When Cream blew up, that's when that's everybody when was, was on. Yeah. I was there. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, we look at things, the historical aspect of it, but to be a hip hop fan is to be kind of very critical of what we have. We maintain, yeah. we, we have a lot of maintenance to our shit about what it should be in like, because we love it so much and we're so passionate about it. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we bring that critical lens to it. That's a part of hip hop. To me, being a critic is so inherently a part of hip hop, which is probably why eventually even all our stars have become kind of media figures in some sense, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and do you find it difficult that <laughs> you're, no you're critical? That there's no ice right now? I think, yeah, I think we're out of ice. <laughs> we, we, if you we, need more we ice, we can bring in more ice. Go no ahead, pour it up, pour it up, pour it up. No, we need ice for him, yeah. Okay. Just well, to make sure. Are we live? I'm sorry. No, I mean, oh, we're, we're live, live, but you can yeah. go ahead and pour it up. We need more ice, I mean. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, sure. go ahead, Orlando. Grab some mics. You, you, you can leave the camera on me while I talk some shit for a second. Right? <laughs> go ahead. You know, what I mean, again, go everything go we do is live. Ice, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go grab some ice. Go There's grab some ice. No, and you know what else to grab, right? The le- the young legend. The young legend has to oh, be introduced. Yeah. As always, oh, every every episode, no matter what, this one thing happens, which will happen right now. Uh oh, I'm scared. Uh, but um, no, no. So in such a hyper I said calling an ISO play isolation. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it's such it's a critical in. industry, right? Uh-huh. Like when we're dealing with rappers, athletes. What you got? My phone over there, charge right. Sure. Did I put it there? Oh, no, it's over here. Sorry. It's all live. I said it's all Let's good. Let's do it. You know My I mean? bad. So, so this, it's such a, a place where, like, when you talk about rappers and when you talk about athletes, it's always like, you know, um, we had Steven Jackson up here yeah. uh, a little rec- more recently, and Shout he was talking Seattle. about... Go ahead. You can give him the ice. Oh, shit. Knock on the door. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we had Steven Jackson. When Steven Jackson was here, mm-hmm. he had that whole back and forth, uh, you know, problem with uh, Shakur Stevenson, mm-hmm. right? And um, when you had, when, when he spoke about him and saying it was the most boring fight I've ever seen, I'll never pay for another pay-per-view of Shakur Stevenson. Okay. You know, that, that made Shakur go off and start talking shit about him and this and that. And now there's this back and forth on Twitter or Instagram or whatever, wherever the hell mm-hmm. the back and forth happened now. I feel like there's a lot of athletes, there's a lot of rappers Mm -hmm. that feel like they're above criticism. So now we're in the social media age where everybody kind of gets it. Like, Mm -hmm. I I feel like there's, there was two eras for you, right? (laughs) You had, you had the magazine era Mm -hmm. where you were able to stay behind the scenes and you have the social media era where it's now and everybody's looking at you and saying, okay, well, he said this. I could reach out to him directly. They don't have to click a... They, mm-hmm. they, they don't have to write to you. Yeah. Right? They could go right you to your get page. Get the hay letters. Yeah, yeah. They could, they could Everybody's hear accessible. Yeah. yeah. And so do you feel like that's tough now dealing with... You know, be, do you feel like you have to back down from being so critical? No, not at all. You got to tell your truth at the end of the day. I think it's... People have a direct line with you. That's the difference of it, right? I mean, back then, you needed letters. Like, people would write letters, and it meant a lot. Like, you know, people write letters to the magazine, and you run the letters. And so like, wild. And then it was like, wait, you know, do I respond to the letters? Like, you know, <laughs> fuck you. You said it's whack. It's actually good. It's like, no. You did what you had to do. They have, a, they have a chance to have their response and what they say. Like, I have no problem with that. It's like, if I say something critical, like, let's say I don't like your album. You should have the right to say, fuck you. I like my album's dope. It's like, I'm not going to then jump on you. I, that's not how I function. Like, I said what I had to say. So you have a ch- you should have a chance to rebuttal it. And then it should, it should end there, hopefully. But if it keeps going, it's like, I'm not engaging with that to me. Because I've already said what I had to say. It wasn't, I didn't say it. I didn't say my critique to, to try to create some sort of like debate or narrative with you. I just said what I thought yeah. the situation was. So I think now we get caught up in that. What is it about? Is it about engagement? No. In that sense, it's not engagement. That's critique. Mm-hmm. And and you can get it wrong sometimes. And the best thing ever is that people always love is that when you say that you critique this something this way and then you were wrong. And you look at it now and you say, you know what? I was wrong. That right. wasn't right. Little yeah. Wayne, I should have saw Little Wayne was going to be that. Yeah. And it shouldn't have been a split with Beanie Siegel. I was wrong. So there's accountability. But, yeah, I think that that's the problem now. I think everybody wants to get caught up in 
engagement, which leads to this sort of endless exchange of like, okay, so now it's 2023, and here's a reminder, 50 Cent and Ja Rule still don't like each other, or 50 Cent and Rick Ross don't like each other, or like, like I, I, I accept that. I don't expect 50 Cent and Rick Ross to ever be on the same page. Never. I don't expect 50 Cent and Ja Rule to ever be on the same page. Like, I'm fine with that. It's like, that's not my world of like trying to act like it should be anything different. Right. That's fine. Right. You, know? you had you had uh, Mano that said you were always like uh, super critical of him, and um, you always had bad things to say about him. You know, like, and that, and that, but, but that's I? what I mean. So, like, when it comes to artists, no, I don't think he th- he didn't think I showed him enough love. I think okay. that's what it was. Yeah, to me. Okay, but that's that's what it is, right? So, like, yes. you're such a polarizing figure. Well, like, like, even even for me, like, 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 check this out. When I'm listening no, to the interview, mm-hmm. right? When I'm mm-hmm. listening to your Drink Champs interview. I'm hearing and I'm like, you know, he starts talking about like, you know, paying for interviews and what you think about um, other people jumping into the scene. And then when you talk about what what, um, you know, Drake doing interviews with people that are not from mm-hmm. the culture uh, per se. I Like, I, I wonder, like, even what you think about somebody like us. Right. And, and what we're doing in the, in the podcast industry, because we're different. But with somebody that's such a polarizing figure, I think for me. Which is different for us, I would say, mm-hmm. right? Uh, when I when I'm thinking about the Danzer project, I, I, I often think about what Cato and I think. We we're we're two people that we welcome it. Mm. We welcome the advice. We welcome the criticism because I mm. think that's what's going to help us grow. What do you see when you know, like you're you're criticizing somebody? Is it just like a you jump to it and you act, or is it something that it's well thought thought out every time you 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 make a assessment about somebody in their career. I'm just telling what I think is my truth at that time, you know, whether I'm right or wrong. I think, you know, like obviously like, you know, you can say right now, oh, the podcast market is saturated. There's so much shit. Everybody thinks that doing a podcast is this quick ride yeah. to like get the success and there's so many a lot of things, whatever. Just, blah, blah. just to let everybody know you do go broke if you don't if you don't you know what I mean? Like it's it's hard work. You gotta no, work. But, but there's a reason I'm here at the Dancer Project. Like yeah. and I'm with you guys because I see what you're doing is distinctly different. Like you in, in 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 spite of that landscape, which does exist and it's true, you brothers is doing things a certain way that's carving a different place in the market like and 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 making noise and like impacting so that's undeniable i I love to again i think there's a side of me kind of to what you were saying earlier it's like i love to create i love to be able to say this is mine this is dope check out what i just did Mm -hmm. but i do also get a joy out of curation i get a joy out of recognizing oh this is dope you know, let me turn my light to this so everybody else could also check this out. Like, yeah. because that's also discovery. Like you said, so much of music is that inherent discovery. You know, that's where music comes from of like, I like this. Let me tell my friend about it. Mm-hmm. Or my friend put me up on this. Like get cassette tapes back in the day when I was a kid, like whatever it was, it's just like yeah. you want that entry point of discovery. So I love it. You know, if you're doing the right thing, I think it should stand out. I think I don't like when people try to think it's going to be some sort of shortcut or Mm-mm. it's going to be whatever. It's like if the quality's there, people are going to recognize. Just earlier, yeah. I was talking to a good friend of mine, and I was telling him, I was like, you know, if I could make it here, and I don't feel like I've made it yet. I'm somebody that's very mm-hmm. humble in my expectations. I understand what I where I where I need to be and where I want to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, I feel like I could make it anywhere because this is two and a half years and it's hard work. Yeah. And you know, I've I've built businesses. I've I've built my empire through building businesses and mm-hmm. consulting. And and I feel like when I think about everything that I'm doing here, I'm like, man, this is two and a half years of how hard work and all money out, no money in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I let, you see Nipsey back there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. All money in. Mm-hmm. So it's like you know, I I, I reinvest in everything that we have here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't tell you how many hours Cato and I have put in, not not only just here, but on the phone, planning everything. Yep. Sitting there, oh, the, you, you know how long that, that conversation goes on about just Elliot Wilson? Oh, okay, man, hey, yo, we got, <laughs> we got this weekend coming up, yeah. and this yeah. we got this one popping up, and I, I think it could happen. And, you know, I'm yeah. calling him, like, excited like a little kid. I'm like, said, I, know ready? You got, I know you got the Let's wedding go. and everything. Yeah, I know yeah. you got the wedding and everything, but you got to talk to them. You got to talk to them, you know Big what I'm e saying? Coming like, up, yeah. Big E, let's go. And so, nah, like, but, but it's recognizing, man, the work you guys are doing is amazing. So. Now, how do you feel 
And I appreciate Thank you, you great. Thank yeah. you, yeah, definitely. Good. I can skip that. Thank you, that applause. Yeah, yeah, get yeah, that yeah. applause in, baby. <laughs> definitely appreciate that. Now, I feel like I'm I'm running into this crossroads here that you had a situation mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. Um, where Khaled was like, you know, he he feels like you're his brother, and maybe you don't believe in him, right? But and and I and and before you answer that, uh-huh. I feel like that I'm dealing with that now, mm. and people that I genuinely, you know, not to be a dickhead, y'all, but <laughs> there's just some people I don't believe in that I feel like they they feel like they're connected to me, okay, and I should just sit there and. Do an interview like, oh well, you know, well because I know this person and so and so, or because I knew should you look out, years, yeah, yeah. Let, let me come up there, let me do an interview. The look out, yeah, look yeah. Out. That's, that's so, a very tricky. So I guess the look it's a two-part a question. Thing. I guess look it's out, a, Boba Boy. Yeah, I guess it's a two-part question. What do you of feel course. about Khaled saying something like that? And what advice would you give me to handle those types of situations? You got to be true and be honest to who you are. You know, with all respect, and just be a straight shooter with it. You know, um. You know, people forget at that point, that was a critical time in Khaled's career. Um, and he started to be on a little bit of a decline. You know, no shots. Yeah. We love Khaled. Oh, yeah. And then the Snapchat thing happened and everything just kind of in the sort ski. of some, <laughs> the jet ski. And it's like, yeah. holy shit. Like he be, but at that time, yeah, I had to stand by that decision. At that time, I, I couldn't, at the time, with whatever... Backing I had or corporate sponsors or whatever I had, whatever, I couldn't justify giving him an interview at that time with a crown. And obviously, he should his feelings should be hurt or he should be upset at me because we had done a lot of great business together and we had that relationship. So, again, all you can do is be straight up with somebody and deal with how they would feel with that instead of playing games, right? So I had to tell him, I can't do this. And he didn't like that. I said we couldn't do this, and it created some tension. And then it comes to the point where – Fast forward, he does that. He does the Snapchat, blah, blah, blah. He overcomes the sort of, you know, hiccups he had in his career and elevates his career beyond. And, like, look where he's at now. It's insane. It's crazy. Like, there was no Jay-Z managing him. And, like, <laughs> like, you think about what that – everybody forgets now because it's so <laughs> – Yeah. It's yeah. so, like, um, uh, fairy tale now or, like, you know yeah, – We're used to it now. It's, now it's he's so many wins. Like, yeah. You can imagine – Khaled facing like career adversity that like, it could be over because he's he overcame that. That was that period. And that's when we clashed. Thankfully, you know, and I said at that time, what happened then after that was I had gotten a, a MTV two deal for Crown, which was the live interview thing that he wanted. And one of the first persons I came back to was Khaled. Khaled. I was like, yo, it's time. Like it's time. Like I I was you proved me wrong. It's wrong. And he did it. And we had a great moment and helped me with the MTV two at the time. Yeah. And I kissed his ass because, you know, it's what he deserved. And that's he proved me wrong. And that, that's the thing. It's like I think all you can really do is be honest and straight up with people. And you got to deal with what comes with that. doesn't yes. mean you're always going to be friends, always be cool. Somebody might be mad at you. You know, you have to almost allow yourself to – it's okay for somebody to be mad at me. I, I, Absolutely. You know, like yeah. that, you know that, Especially in what No one mean. likes that feeling, but it's better to be – you don't want to be a sucker-ass nigga like that you aren't being clear – on how you feel, like does he? I don't know if if, if Danza really fucks with me or not. Yeah. You don't want yeah. that. You got to. This is where you at. Like th- th- this is how I feel here, and this may lead to a conflict, but this is my stance here. And then here, and and that's the best thing with it. I love to be proven wrong, and rappers and artists yeah. love to prove you wrong. You know, you yeah. thought I was yeah, over, that's like too. you know, you thought was, uh, that's part of the bravado of it, right? Yeah. Like yeah. You, you was fronting, you didn't think it was blah blah. blah. It's yeah. like you didn't think it was gonna be me. I think it's also important yeah. to to speak your piece on the back end, like I, and and be straight up. I was wrong. It is what it is. One of I the was. one of the you, best. You proved me wrong. You proved you proved me, me yes. wrong. Yes, that, and that's also giving credit. I love that credit. men are able you to say that wrong. now. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it's powerful. I feel, like I feel like it was gone for a long time. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you hurt my feelings. Is it? Oh, you hurt my feelings. I thought we was cool. So you should have looked out. Well, I do love you. You are my friend, but I can't look out because right now. I'm trying to build my thing, and I'm trying to do the best things that are going to benefit my business and my right. options. And I don't want to lose that rapport with you, but that's not the best decision right now. I can't get that through the door. I can't get that green lit. I got free slots for this. I can't make it happen. Yeah, Some, and sometimes it's yeah. I can look out. It's just may not be in the way that you want me to. Hello. So it's not that exactly. I'm telling you no, exactly. bro. I'm not telling you no because I don't fuck with you. Yep. It's just things got to be right, and sometimes it's not on me. I got to. Run it by the board. And See, get, that's what I'm saying. To be that, to be, to be, to be honest and be forthright in your shit. That's 
to me, toughness and thoroughness and yeah. Fuck the street shit. Stand Anybody can business, like they say. It's not crash out shit. It's just like, yo, it's just your integrity. Like, st- was his st- almost overused standing, on, standing on your business. Yeah. It's stand just like, yo, it's just, it's yeah, yeah. just yeah. like ten toes. Yeah. yeah, ten toes. But it's like, but that's what it is to a certain extent of just that like level of like, yo, I know who I am. I know what this decision is right now. This is why I'm doing this. I'm telling you this honestly, and you're gonna have to receive it that way. And it may take time to process that. And here's the thing, and I'm gonna love when you prove me wrong. Right. I'm gonna love when that narrative changes. Right. In. <laughs> but, but I'm gonna. Come, That's a good message nothing, to push. There's nothing man. the artists love more to then come back and be like, "No, nah, nah. you <laughs> on me." That's their favorite. Shit. Be they love that shit because <laughs> hip hop is competitive. So like yeah. when you see people rise and get yeah. better, that's part of it. Absolutely, that is part of it. And they love to stick to that guy like. I remember when everybody was front of me, they thought it was over for me. Yeah. Like, it's just like, one, on. one of the best word tracks I learned in business, it, when you're wrong, is I was simply operating based on the information I had at that time. Mm. Now, hello. once new information was presented to me, <laughs> hello, my, my opinion my opinion is different now. I didn't know all exactly. that. I didn't have all the facts in front of me. I was simply operating based on no, the information you, you I had at that time. dealt with the facts you had in front of you. That's all I can And do. now the facts change. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and here we are, so I'm glad we could talk about it now. You know, like that's that's so so much power in that. And so sometimes it's the unsaid part. It's that the fact that you didn't say that little piece that ties are broken and severed and never mended. Yeah. Because you didn't take the time to say, yo, my bad. I was wrong. I fucked that up. I butchered it. My bad. Yeah. You know, but let's work forward, moving forward. Let's. Yeah. Let's build something. Let's create. Let's. But that's the thing. You go back this. to the other thing. Saying like, compared to me with a Drake or me and a Fifty Cent. If I say it again, whatever Fifty Cent thinks or not, it's like you can't say we had we didn't have that initial relationship, us connecting, right? Mm-hmm. Whether we have our ups and downs or not. Someone like Drake, I did have that. So that's that's the difference to yeah. me. It's like if you have that with somebody, you can weather those things. But if you never had that, then that's just what it's always going to be, whether it works in your favor or not. It and definitely worked in the favor back then, right? Because I'll never forget the line. Hey, here, double XL, double XL. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> sure. at, that that, point, at, at that point, it was like, whoop. No, you know, that never was this, though. It, no, no, no. No, they was he was saying to go to double XL, wasn't he? No, that was the beginning. So let me say, okay, let's go back. Okay, yeah. so all Man, right. he about to change the whole about to ideology the for yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, the Marshall Mathers shit? I thought he was saying no, like was this disc. is gonna help that source. Was a disc. No, I'm saying okay, so um wasn't he dissing source? No, he's dissing double XL. Because mm. source had he Benzino. Didn't, he didn't like the um Okay, so again, like I said, they had wrote an article about him as the white rapper thing mm-hmm. that he didn't like. So I take over Double XL. My whole first mission is this is late 1999. Got to squash the beef with Eminem. He's about to be the biggest thing in the world. Yeah. That's my, so my idea 99. was, I want this is my first idea. I want, literally wanted my first issue to be Eminem on the cover of Double XL, ripping up a Double XL on the cover of Double oh. XL. <laughs> Because it was, it was an old idea we had. No, actually, it was uh, Rap Pages. Like, it was my Ego Trip guys. We had an idea of, at the time, all the West Coast magazines were mad at Fat Joe. <laughs> so we was trying to pitch to our guy, Gabe Alvarez, our Mexican brother was at Rap Pages. We wanted to have Fat Joe on the cover of Rap Pages, ripping the Rap Pages. So I was like, same idea could apply That's here. Cool. Yeah. And, that, and then the whole feature was going to be like, he has me tied up in the office and <laughs> You know, I'm I'm tied up behind the desk, and he takes over Double XL, and it's just like fuck this guy. That's a good. Blah, blah, that was yeah. good. Exactly. I see it. I can exactly. see it. Exactly. So that did, but that didn't happen. Paul wasn't ready. Paul Rosenberg wasn't Paul ready wasn't for that. It. it didn't happen. <laughs> um, so that first issue I did with DMS on the cover, I put a very horrible because I listened to the creative director at the time, this guy named Don Morris. He had did a whole horrible illustration of uh, imagery of like a. a woman that looks like Eminem's mother per se Uh-oh. spanking Eminem and then we put it at the back oh, page yeah. of the first issue I did the very first issue I did this is issue number 13 came out the end of 1999 so when Marshall Mathers he said like I go to the magazine picture my big white ass last page <laughs> he's talking about that oh, the first issue I did man. so the very first issue I did he's dissing double XL yep. Double XL, double XL. Like, that, the bullshit can sell. Like, he, so he picks it up like he said, but it was so, like, he just dismissive saying, like, Slip. Oh, damn. I, Slip. See, see, yeah. see how it well, changes yeah. when you don't no. know everything? No, I'm thinking he was positive. Source, so no, he's, because we yeah. became big after that. Yeah. So, but back then, we wasn't nobody. So it was like, when he was saying that, like, your little bullshit magazine, blah, blah, blah. Uh. 
So I was like, wow, he dissed me on Marshall Mathers. My first issue, he dissed me. But I was <laughs> wrong, but crazy. I was but I was wrong for having um being upset that my feelings involved that he didn't accept the idea of like being this great light. creative idea of like getting the cover and being yeah. you know, and putting that bullshit illustration there, dissing him. That wasn't cool. It was wrong. Yeah. Um so then it turned around. But you know, when it went around the other way where the MJ fifty was like you know, that meeting was like, okay, 50, like I said, 50 was like the guy. I don't know if he said to sit down with Paul. When I sat with Paul Rosenberg, Eminem's manager, he was like, I didn't know at the time, Benzino had dissed Eminem and put out a record called Pull Your Skirt Up. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that was out. So we go to have this she lunch. Just getting. If you have this lunch, we sit down at Lure, Lure Fish Bar, which still exists in New York. Shout out Lure Fish Bar. Um, and I'm with Noah, Callahan Bever, again, my guy, and uh, Paul. And Paul's like, have you heard about uh, uh, Pull Your Skirt Up? And Zeno, Pull Your Skirt Up? I'm like, what are you talking about? I think he's fucking with me. He's like, DJ Clue played it last night on the radio. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it's I didn't trouble, know. Pure trouble. I didn't know what it was. So, I, so I, came, I came into that meeting just trying to get permission to get a 50 cent cover. That's all I wanted. I wanted, I wanted him to say, hey, it's cool. I have been supporting 50 like I told you. It's cool. Do the 50 cent cover. We have no problem with you. And then Paul came, like, how would you like to do 50 Cent Eminem and Dr. Dre? Because Benzino had just dropped Pull Your Skirt Up. So they were mad. Every time. And that's when it started. Yeah. So then when Eminem made those records back at him and made the sauce and double mm-hmm. So I mean, when that came out, those records came out, and then Eminem said, like, I don't need your magazine. I got double XL numbers anyway, double yeah, XL's yeah, yeah, number yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. And you just get mad because you're bigger than all, bigger than them. I played that shit on cassette. I, I could have cried him off. I cried. I cried him off. It's like closed the door, cried myself. Cause that, that's when I knew, like, oh shit, I'm really. I think I'm gonna beat these guys, but now I'm really gonna beat. These guys. Yeah, like, <laughs> like it's really it's me. It's like really you buy no yo, more source yo, no yo, more. Yo, the biggest, you know I mean? the biggest artist in the world is literally telling you, don't buy this. Buy, this. buy my shit. Fuck yeah. Fuck that yeah. was insane. Yeah. Like that, that. That doesn't get enough. At like, that time. Crazy. I remember I, I played, me and Vanessa sat there. I played it the first time. I was like, I was like, I don't. Did he really like? Is this real? <laughs> is this real? Like somebody? Fuck, yeah. And then she left the office. I played it again. I sat in my office. I just fucking cried. Wow. Cried like a motherfucking baby. <laughs> I was like, I'm really gonna get these guys. Now. Yeah. Oh like, man. It's, like it's over. Like I'm really gonna get them now. Oh, I can only imagine, man. What a what a fucking time. <laughs> Do you miss that magazine era? Do you miss this like? Yeah, I don't, I don't the, miss it, but I, it doesn't exist. I can't miss it because yeah, it's I so. I, I I I think I miss that it's not. It doesn't. I miss that it doesn't exist at all. I guess I would say. Yeah. Right. It doesn't like having that source of media there. Yeah. The, the I, importance yeah. of what that was at that time. Like, just, yeah. But and just grabbing it on your daily pickup at the bodega, at the fucking yeah. Publix, at the window. I miss. I miss the important. I miss the overall importance of that. Right. Mm-hmm. Whether I got the. Good end of the stick or not. I remember when uh, Mimi Valdez, when Jay and I squashed their beef, and she just put the photo of them together on the stage. And I was like, that's bullshit, because that's not her photo. It's just a blah, blah. And that shit, I was like, oh, shit. She's fucking brilliant. This shit is so, and it's so, like, so it's like, so I remember taking those L's in the newsstand, too. Like, I remember, like, so I missed it. That's not important at all. Or that's, that's a lost period, per se. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so now when we talk about, like, the GOATs and who's the greatest of all time and what we do media, you know, broadcasters, radio people have an advantage because as much as you would diss radio and say, well, radio's not what it used to be, but, but yeah. you know, it's it's still respected because it exists. I sway see. is still Sway. It's still fighting. Angie it's Martinez like- is still Angie Martinez. Yes. And the, you know, and now the new generation of what broadcasting is, podcasts so... You know, like that's that's the world that I deal with. So, you know, if I'm doing it like a, um, I thought about this the other day. I'll give you, I'll give you a good one. If, I, if I'm doing a a media, a media hip hop media, Mount Rushmore that doesn't include me. Okay. Well, you're the blog father, so <laughs> we gotta put you on there. But no, he's no, being no, no, unbiased. He's, he's no, doing yeah, a journalist. Take press, me out. You know, take me out. Oh, I, I, yeah. I'll be there with three other faces of myself. So no, but yeah. um, without me. Um, Sway, Angie Martinez. They're mm. so beloved. That's it. They're beloved. That's it too. Like that's why it's hard too when you compete that's because it's like 
I've been a good guy, I've been a bad guy, but like, so I'm not beloved. Like, yeah, beloved is I, different. I I'm like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, like, <laughs> no, beloved is, all, beloved is almost do no wrong. Yes, exactly. Like, Sway could, you can't could hate curse Sway. out your Come mother on. and you're going to be like. Sway is the most beloved. So that's why yeah. we say, like, we say, Sway's the goal. Because it seems so, like, safe and right to say that because yeah. who got a problem? Like, that's why the, that's why that, that's else, why that Kanye so. moment is classic forever. It's like, <laughs> yo, dog, you bugging out on Sway? He lost like, a come lot. On, dog. Kanye lost yeah. a lot of people on that. Right? <laughs> it was like, hold on, bro, you snapping on you Sway? Snapping on Sway, yeah. and then Sway still kind of smoothed you out and, he and gave kept you that it going. Credit. Yeah, he gave yeah, you that credit, like, and then Sway still closed it out with him, and the whole shit is like, hey, hey what's up, little man? This is the what's going on? How you doing? Fist bump. Oh, fist bump. Oh, there you go. It's a ritual. He gets, he, gets, he, gets, he gets the junior time. He gets to meet all the legends. Let's get it. Let's get it. Junior. No way junior doesn't meet. Oh, see, so want to hear my Mount Media Rushmore without me? You ready? Yeah, 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 yeah. So oh, yeah. Uh, Media Mount Rushmore. Without me. But the non biased. Of course, I'm there, but it's, take me out. Let me put him in there. Let me put him in there. All right. Michael. Uh, Michael. That's a, that's, a, that's a tradition. Oh, bring him out? He's met more famous people than I have. That boy. <laughs> you got to do it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, it's, it's going to be something cool to collect and show him on the label. The funny shit is, uh, I'll give you stories to come back. So my little no, brother, same it. way, he grew up in the game. So he's like, you know, hey, EJ's with Leo DiCaprio and Jay-Z <laughs> doing shots. <laughs> uh, Wale, blah, blah. I remember being in the back of the office, and all of a sudden I see this big shot go whoosh. It's like, he's like, my little brother's like, that's LeBron James. Who? LeBron James. <laughs> he whispering. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron James is like like in year one or two at the Cavs. That's the whole president cover. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know who the fuck LeBron. I kind of know who he is, but it's not a it big deal to me. Yet. I'm like, yeah, hey. Yeah. Like, I'm not like, this is Kobe or some shit. Like, I'm like, I never saw my little brother be so starstruck. It was like, LeBron James. He's here. And then you saw Jay-Z yesterday and Leonardo Caprio had shots with him and... <laughs> You saw Fat Joe, he patch on your ass. And the, like, <laughs> yeah, you talking about rookie? You talking about? That's and then Justin God. Timberlake walked in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nah, but Justin Timberlake, I can understand, man. Is it? Okay, Mount, uh, hip hop medium. Your brother Mount was Rushmore. right. Your brother was right, but he was 100% yeah, he right. Was right. <laughs> My brother's always right. Shout out, yeah. Steven. Uh, hip hop Mount hip hop media, yeah. Mount Rushmore, modern day, not including me, because obviously I belong. Yeah, sway. Angie Martinez, Charlamagne the God, mm. Joe Budden. It's four. Oh, oh yeah, well, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Almost I, I, I almost wanted to. Dance the project. Dance the project. Well, he's used to right, top so, five. So, he's used to My rush was right. four. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, brother. No I would admit, I'm one of those guys that go out there and admit, right off the jump, was a huge, huge Joe Budden fan throughout. His entire career. And that's the beauty. He built, so. that's the thing. You can't front. He built. He cultivated a fan base, a loyal fan base as an artist that's transcended to the media transition. May mm -hmm. have lost some people, but it's still a very much grassroots. Lost. We never. Game. We never seen that, and gain more too, yeah. right? So yeah. we had never seen that. That's why he doesn't get a lot of credit too. So you know, that's when I say this, like, no Mount Rushmore. Oh yeah, right? sway. Angie that, Martinez. I, I feel consider, like if I people consider, don't fuck with Angie Martinez, I'm sorry. Well, that's what I'm saying. I was saying, I think we was in here when we said that. Like, Sway, the difference between somebody like Sway or Angie, they, unlike me, they're beloved. It's nothing but positivity. You can't hate on Sway. You can't hate on Angie Martinez. Even Nas, when he was dissing Angie, like, that doesn't exist. You, you don't got the Angie yeah, Sway. Like, you can't, you can't. It, yes, that, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, yeah. that's why the, the Kanye moment was so, so yeah, hilarious yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's like, you gonna try to check Sway? It's sway. like that's why it's legendary. It's just like, like Sway's coming for you, dog. And he's like, he's even like, yo, yo, check this out. Da, da, da. And he smoothed it out by the end of the interview. So it's like, Sway and Angie are so beloved. You know, Charlemagne and Joe Budden aren't. They're polarizing. Like mm -hmm. I guess I am, right? So, I, I mean, I like to think I'm beloved, but I'm I'm somewhat polarizing. I've kind of I rode the east side of it through my mm -hmm. career, right? So. Yeah, I think they represent the sun, and they represent the modern day of it, right? Of the last decade, 15, 20 years of what it is. So I look at those four people as like the measuring stick of like whatever competition or whatever yeah. it is. So I think that needs to be said. What's interesting about that is, too, uh, the thing that sticks out Joe Budden is the only one that didn't have a, a career in radio. 
Yeah, you know, absolutely. But he, but he no, made yes, that he list. That's yes, he did. Well, early how nice that morning show, a little yeah. brief period. Okay, yeah, he was on okay. the early. But now I'm talking. Angie's still on the radio. Yeah. Sway still on the radio. Yeah. Charlemagne yeah. still. They were they were tradition. They were tra- uh, those three are traditional pr- broadcasters. broadcasters. Yeah. Joe Budden wasn't. Right. Joe Budden was a rapper who did mm-hmm. make that segue yeah. to become a real solid traditional broadcaster, which makes which makes that even higher praise. You know, shout I out think to so. shout out to Joe Budden. Animal. And shout out Ian Schwartzman, his manager, mm-hmm. his partner in all things. Like, they've built something amazing. Mm-hmm. They're a dynamic duo. I think you said something like, was I dissing him when I put the little ad? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, No, yeah. one of your, the one, people in the comments was like, yeah, yeah, ask him yeah. about uh, yeah, yeah, running yeah, the yeah. ad that they put. It Was he taking shots at blah, blah, I was like, yo, I document the culture, man. Like, I thought it was funny <laughs> that, like, they did the ad and then they didn't preface that they were going to do an ad. You know, they made strong statements about right. being anti-ad if it wasn't done the right way. And then to just do an ad that way. And then he does the read in a very campy kind of way. And <laughs> Melissa's like, what is this? Da, da, da. Like, the, come on. Like, Joe, of course, listen, Joe of course I'm going to acknowledge it. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to acknowledge it. I like that, though, I didn't man. take shots Somebody, at you with it. Like, okay, yeah. great. So it feels like, what? come on, man. Being such a Joe Budden fan, because I am, I could literally say of this course. to him because... I've 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 listened to enough of your music, Joe, to know that you are an, an emotional son of a bitch, yeah. uh, and, and it is it that. is what he is. He is. Uh, he he would tell you that himself. He gets he gets that way, and he jumps to the gun a lot. I don't see a problem with uh, people figuring out their way and how to do ads on their shows, right? Of course. Like, you know, I don't. Well, see that's what he problem. always said. He he didn't want to do it the traditional way that yeah. he felt other people were doing it. The can't be that way. That's whack. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like or just that you said difficult thing. I don't to, have to control of it. About. You just like put these like ads in my bits and like fuck up the listening I, I, I experience. Think, yeah. I think for some people it's it's cooler to do it the campy way. Yep. It's like I'm paying bills right now, ladies and gentlemen. Like you'll hear people it, it, be, it became a cool <laughs> thing to say. It became yeah. a cool thing to say Ladies and gentlemen, you know we got to pay some bills right now, so we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and hit you with this. Yeah, because the audience is like, "Yo, there's a project got the bag on that one." They like they they, yeah, they go behind yeah. the scenes. They they assume. Yeah. They're not negative towards it. They yeah. think like, "Oh, my my people that I fuck with, they got the bag." Mm-hmm. So yeah. Sell this to Whatever me. You, By the way, the Dancer got. Project ain't got no bag from nobody else right now. Yeah. So I will say <laughs> the this. Dancer Project ain't, the bag, yeah. man. Ain't nobody yeah. cutting us off. Ain't nobody telling us that that Elliot Wilson can't say this it's or can't say up. that. Whatever he wants to say, can say there's nobody that could pull a plug from me and be like, no. It is what it is. Pause. It's coming. It is what it is. Pause. It's coming. So so pause, look, pause. what a what a <laughs> tremendous <laughs> career. <laughs> what a tremendous Yo this journey. is dope Cause you didn't do the fucking Like chronological interview shit I hate that uh, like. uh, <laughs> So when you was in the 90s I didn't yeah. feel it Welcome again to the Danza Project We have our We and have our you, guy and, here and, Elliot Wilson And then when you hit 2004 What was that like and then, What was that like And, and that's then 2014 the, Ooh We have Elliot that's Wilson That's when it took a with turn two teams <laughs> It don't feel natural to do that. So, right. so it feels like all this. Yo, can I? That's my biggest advice. To stop. Everything don't have to be chronological with the interview no. shit, right? I you know what? You yeah. know why I don't like the chronological shit because yeah. it, it's like uh, it. There's an ending point. So when we get to the end of your story, that means the conversation's over. I don't yeah. want to be limited in that way. Yeah. Let's talk how things come up. Let's just talk. 100%. Let's just let the conversation roll. Yeah, we never flow, really, like, we never it, really traditionally started our interview or our conversation. <laughs> Correct, that's which how, is what's great about it. Yeah, that's I hate what we that. Love. We just spoke, but so I hate, but I hate, that. But, salut, salut, <laughs> gentlemen. Thank you. I hate when people feel like they can't do it unless they're hitting these sort of key points, and, and then mm-hmm. they're thrown off. It's like, okay, I want to ask you this, but. You stuck in 2006. So go back here. It's like, I can't ask you this. Like, yeah, I just want to meet people and to be. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 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 what's going on later tonight? You got anything going out here at the weekend? I'm going to. Uh, I think uh, my guy Sean Dickerson. He's a party guy. He's uh, LA promoter, big time LA promoter. I think he's doing something with uh, Little Wayne's there in Tiger. Nice. I'll probably oh, pull sorry. up on that real quick, but. Nice. I gotta actually go to uh, Arizona either tomorrow or Sunday. They have some sort of. TikTok event with uh, Cardi B or whatever. Event. TikTok, okay, TikTok. Shit. I gotta see what's going on with the sure, TikTok. Got, yeah, you got to. That, that's where it's at, you man. TikTok. Man, I'm I gotta so tap in. I'm not gonna lie. We, see, I'm. I'm we I, argue I, about I struggle this. with TikTok. Yeah, I struggle. We, I'm we 38. Argue about I'm trying to stand. 
I, I, talk to me, gentlemen. We, we, I, I'm we argue you. about it. Because I'm not a TikToker. I'm well, trying. The thing is, none of us are. None but, of us are. But we understand it's an important. We uh, respect and or value. It's an important value system to the situation. Yeah, and it's like if if you don't do it, you're almost doing yourself a disservice. Yeah. You're you're cutting out a certain market, and the reach on there is apparently crazy. Yeah. Not just in the immediate. We need United to be. States. We need to be aware of it, no matter what. Yes. Even if we don't participate, or yes, it's not our thing. You, there needs to be an awareness of it because of the cultural relevancy of it. Yeah, you don't I mean, want you know you, you don't want five years, three years to go by, and then everybody's like, "Man, you should have started three, two, five years mm-hmm. ago." You know, so it's definitely something you want to be aware of for yeah, sure. Absolutely, um, 100%. yeah, no, y'all. no, it's it's no. Honestly, this is this is dope for me. Like it's, it's a moment. <laughs> it's a moment where I sit back because we need that too. You know, a lot of people just see us work and they're like, you know, oh, well, they got, you know, they this, this, they're good, they're good, they're good. Sometimes I sit there and I'm like, man, am I doing the right thing? Mm. You know what I mean? Because we we have this interview, these interviews and shit like that. But then we get an opportunity to interview people like yourself that you've already been through everything. Again, I'm talking about you started off, you know, worried about. The roaches when you turn out the lights <laughs> and where they were you where you gonna walk to. I get that water, man. One A, baby. And then and then you don't know, uh, you know, am I gonna do sports? Am I gonna do hip hop? But yeah. you know, is is dad gonna let me chill with all this baseball shit? You know what I mean? 100%. Appa- apparently I'm not as good as Derek Jeter. Shit's not working out. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so you go you try to get into sports, sports yes, ain't working sir. out, you get into hip hop. Yep. And now now there's XXL, there's rap radar. Yep. And now Elliot Wilson is this polarizing figure. There's Why am I still polarizing? You're polar because you know guy, you're I'm polarizing. Old. You come on. I'm too man. old to be polarizing. Come on. You see this guy <laughs> You see this guy on Drink Champs talking this shit. He's a polarizing figure. You oh are my God. you are you are a major name in the industry. Should, should I should yes. I stop should make an effort to be less polarizing? No. No. Nah. No, we need it. Nah, this is this is why. Wow. This is this okay, is so why. You, what, this is why no, I'm calling I'm, up my, my guy my, Fred, my, always busy PR, and I'm like Fred, let can we can we make Elliot Wilson happen? You know what I mean? We got we got bootleg Kev, we got Stephen Jackson, <laughs> we got Channing Crowder. You know what I'm saying? Brandon Marshall, Brandon Fred Marshall. Joe, you know, no, I'm Jim just talking Jones. about just the podcasting industry, right? right? right. Uh, Rolo Tomasi, shout out to Rolo Tomasi and Mike, Sart- Mike Sartain. Sartain, and we got this podcast and shit going on. And I'm like, can we can we really close out so here uh, so without what, having my guy Elliot Wilson in the building? Can we make this shit happen? But but what do you think? Even in this era, continues to is it previous thing, history predating it? Like, what makes me polarizing right now in your mind? Uh, Just because of the history or like... I would say not not only the history. And is that good to be polarizing? Not only the history. It's great to be polarizing. Right. Right. That's that's my goal right now uh, is to be this polarizing. Better than be loved. I don't care if people like me. (laughs) He's not lying. He's not lying. I'd rather be hated. He's not lying. (laughs) I'd rather be hated because it gives me less people to try to pretend like I like. Right. You know what I mean? I right? just I yeah. I want to like I've people. Like I like people. That's that, why I got my daddy in me, no matter what. Whether I play baseball or not, I'm yeah. Elliot Jesse Wilson Jr. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm like, not here to be like everybody. Got love me. Yeah, I like great relationships. I love it. Mm-hmm. But then, like if, you value it more. Yeah, you think there's more value. There's to a it. lot yeah. of people I don't. And this is what this is why I asked you earlier mm-hmm. uh, not to not to uh, get back to that. Yeah. But it was like it's why I asked you earlier. Like you got all these motherfuckers that like they feel like. I owe them an interview, and I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm willing, I'm willing for you to hate me forever, just no, but to not do this interview because no, I can't do it. I won't. I, <laughs> I know that. No, because I, I know that I, my face. I, fuck it. I know that yeah. my face. It, it's not gonna work because there's there's twice that Cato and I maybe more. I don't know, but twice. <laughs> talk to him, sure, Kato. Talk to him, baby. Cato and I had an interview with somebody, and I'm like. I know I don't got I don't got a good fake face. Yeah. I don't got a good fake face. So you can't fake the whole it. time yeah. I'm looking towards Orlando. And so, Orlando's so like, like right this while he's shit hitting up, the man. camera, while he's hitting the camera Orlando's switch. Orlando's like this. Yeah. Seven yeah. minutes left. Yeah. 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 While the camera switch button's hitting and it's on me, it's still me looking That's at him like, hard. yo, we gotta get this motherfucker to fuck up out of here because <laughs> this is terrible. I don't like this. I don't want to interview this person. No problem with you yeah. or whatever it's hard i man. get it but i'm trying i'm trying my best and everything yeah. you're saying is pissing me the fuck off <laughs> you know what i mean like, you gotta think elliot like we really try to 
select who we want to speak oh, to. Oh, you curated, yes. Because for a lot of the folks, some, we don't 100%. want to talk to everybody. Some people 100%. don't deserve a conversation. The 100%. goal is to highlight people, certain people we just don't necessarily. There's a filter system, yeah. yeah. Come there's, on. There's, the so, truth is, there's just a lot of And then there's disappointment if it gets to that, then you don't get yeah. that some, thing. It's like, people, yes. it's disappointing. Sometimes you don't find out until you're already in the room, and then it's like, yeah, yeah Raptors. Yeah. Get these, yeah. <laughs> no, Cass is, yeah, I feel I feel like I feel like a fed in that moment, right? Like you're gonna fucking sit here and lie to me this entire motherfucking time. You know what's crazy? Cancel this goddamn uh, I'll give you I'll give you a good example. I feel like I've been in so I'm obviously older, I'm fifty two. So in the eighties, I born nineteen seventy one. So in the eighties, I'm it's a fan. Like run DMC, that's changed my world, my life and everything. And all the hip hop, eighty eight, the golden era, they said the first golden mm-hmm. era. So I really look back at it now and I'm like, I don't really have a good rapport with like the eighties rappers. Like like I see them at <laughs> things and stuff. Like, I saw yeah. Kamala Especially Harris, V P, like like whatever. And I remember like even when I interviewed them in the nineties, like my heroes, my legends, I remember with, like Run DMC had down with the king. I'm sitting with Run DMC and they're like, Yo, you like the album? And I'm like, I'm seeing my heroes like all vulnerable and like weird. I'm just yeah. like Yo, this is Run, and he's he wants me to tell him this shit is hot because Pete Rock did the fucking beat, and it's just like, it just makes you sad. It's like your heroes, are, yeah. Or you mean me and LL? I mean, LL was so arrogant when I interviewed him at something, and was just like, yeah. I don't. It's just tough. Like, it's, it's, what they say, like the you, Wizard of Oz. You, yeah. You, you, you know, you see what's. You know, you don't want to meet your idol sometimes. It disappoints. That's why I try to be like, yo, if somebody you know respects me. I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to be the best version of me because like, this is actually who I am. So it's like. Whether you like it or not, it's like I'm not trying to be fake with that, but it's like it gets very disappointing sometimes when you like, you know, you sit with somebody and it's just like, wow, like that's not what I thought so and so was. Like yeah. trust, you know, that happens all the time. Yeah, I love Absolutely. hearing you say that because yeah. there's a so don't, so don't think that's foreign to y'all. Like that happens all the time, and that yeah. that's part of the whole the process of what this is. And look, let's use some people some bail. Maybe it wasn't their day. They have some other problems going on. Yeah. We all have our problems, our own mental health. Like, you know, let's shoot them some bail. But at the same time, it's like, you know, at a certain point, it's like, let's be professional. We're here to do something. Yes, exactly. So for us, being that it's considerably early for us, I like to think it's early, even with the the early success that we've had. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When those moments come, that's when it's like, all right, this is the real practice. This is how we get good at what we do. 100%. This person's being dry. They're being short with their answers. Okay, this is our time to shine. And the, yep. the comments and the people viewing will see you know, they were a little guarded in that interview. Yeah. You know, the truth will come out in the wash. Everything comes out in the wash. 100%. So as long as we do our due diligence, stick to the script, ask the right questions and, you know, be the right people in front you of the still gotta, You still got to be y'all. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah, like, no, absolutely. fuck that. I want to be more me now, all right? Like, <laughs> I want to say, hey, yeah. asshole. Yeah. Hey, asshole. Hey, 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 stop fucking hey. around my interview. Hey. You know what I mean? <laughs> so with that said, to close this motherfucker out, right? Dancer Project what? episode number one fifty three, right? What? Yeah, go ahead. No, yeah. no, no, I, you go. No, I um, I definitely had a a question I wanted to get yeah, to. Yeah, that's let's, let's go, let's go. Um, so just being being who you are, and as long as you've been in this industry, for, well, there's a couple things I want to go on. For. I mean, um, being that you do, you are one. of I the, feel like we ain't even start the interview. Listen, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Don't worry, you guys, guys are don't great because we'll keep you, you guys are great. You guys forever. are amazing. Yeah. 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 Um, Don't worry, I drive fast, so wherever you got to get to, we can get to. Right? Yeah. We can definitely you get you there. Um, <laughs> Miami in 30 minutes. Yeah, no, 30? In about 27? 12. 12. Let's go. Be yeah. Y'all party with me tonight? Where we going? We're going to I, I, we hey, might have, we we're, might have to. Hey, it is our best. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying? Yeah, Pull up. Cool, I got y'all. Let's yeah. get it. All right. Damn. Damn. All right. I'm thinking about my Enjoy outfit the wedding. Now. Yeah, enjoy the wedding. Yeah, my dog. Gotta Give me some sounds, Orlando. Enjoy the wedding, goddammit. Shout out my brother hey, McKenzie. Hey, hey, why are you Sorry. late? Why are you late for all the shit that we had to do to the wedding? Elliot what is, Wilson made me Elliot late. Wilson. What is, oh, yeah. what is yeah. tomorrow, my guy? What's that? What uh, is it with? Sunday. But tomorrow, tomorrow we got a photos Rehearsal? and rehearsals gotcha. and the brunch and drinks and gotcha. you got to light. Who, who's thing. your people to get married? My brother Mackenzie and Miss Lori Simeon uh, officially as of Sunday. Shout out Mackenzie. Yeah, newly beautiful wife to be. Yeah, love and blessings. Yeah. Family. I'm, I'm the guy. Appreciate Godfather. you letting my guy hang out with me. I appreciate yeah, that. I appreciate yeah, you for getting in here. You know what I'm yeah. saying? 100%. Bless. Yeah. But, hey, Lori. Uh, <laughs> Mackenzie. <laughs> You're gonna be looks one like down. To, hey, looks like tonight <laughs> shots. You know we're gonna have a great time. We'll we'll see In your you, honor. We'll, yeah, we'll see you uh, Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, nah, so go ahead, say what you just, just yeah. one of the things I wanted to kind of ask you, just being you know yeah. as much as you've done, as much as you've accomplished, mm-hmm. being on so many other folks' 
Mount Rushmore of media gentlemen. Um, what are some things that you would want to leave and, and have an influence on future media personalities? Wow. wow. Okay. Damn. You good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, I think I'm troubled with the fact of the whole, um, just the lack of uh, traditional journalism. Like I feel like this relationship, mm. just, just to understand that like, that's cool. Like, you know, we live in rumor culture. We live in drama culture. Like that's always going to be that way. But I just want to make sure people understand sort of, the real, the real like tenets of like real journalism, like yeah. you know, like tell your story, like the you know, like and the difference of like what reporting is and what your opinion is. You know, I think it's a blurry mm-hmm. line now. Like everybody's like, oh, Puffy's in controversy, so Elliot needs to speak up and say mm. Elliot, you know, Puff did, but so, but but that's not report. Like, so where's the line? This is like mm-hmm. certain point is reporting. It's like, okay, this is a, this is the case Cold that was this facts, just. Yeah, he he settled this case. These other cases came. Now you see he's speaking. He's being adamant, saying, "Hey, I didn't do these things." Yeah. Is he speaking to that, or is he, like so? It's like there's reporting, there's journalism of like so and so did this, the who, what, when, where, why, and how, mm-hmm. and then there's time from like okay, well, all this information or all these different stories, it's op ed. It's my opinion. Here's my mm-hmm. editorial about how I feel about things. Yeah. With the information I got, I feel this is this. This person is cool. This person is foul. This is why I think they're foul. Like, I think yeah. the line gets blurry. So what and I hope to be difference. like to draw that difference of like, it isn't just about like getting that like spark of like success or engagement. It's like we understand what we're doing and how we're documenting this culture because it's so easy to lean into just the thing that's going to get you that instant gratification, you know, but it's very short-sighted. Like, what are you really saying and what are you really doing? And do you have really real information per se? And it's mm-hmm. like, what is the difference between reporting what's going on and then it's time, okay, it's time for you to give your opinion. And we care about your opinion. So, boom, my guy, what's your opinion about all this? Like, yeah. like to be clear about what these lines are, I think the lines get blurry right now because everybody's so caught up in the hot noise takes, and yeah. hot takes and, you know, gaining that. What what, yeah. you, what you think? I think that... I, I think that this is foreign to people still. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's going on with um, media in general? You know, having a personality and getting to know an Elliot Wilson is still foreign to people. Yeah, it's not like they really truly understand. I mean, look, you look at what Vlad's done. I, I, you know, when we had the interview with Vlad, I'm looking at the comments and I'm like, people are saying culture vulture. Because they've kind of been programmed to say it. I don't 100%. even know if they know what they're saying. Yep. You know what I mean? It's like, this is the popular thing to say. Yeah, it's so trendy to call him a culture that is true. I think people are starting to learn yep. how impactful an Elliot Wilson is. Mm-hmm. Right? So I don't think we even know yet. Mm. You know, and, and we're starting to, we'll, we'll start understanding what you're really Mm. feeding to these generations you know the mm. something vlad said that was dope and i'm, I'm only referencing him because he is somebody that absolutely and uh he's been doing this for a long time 100%. but he said um and i don't agree with i don't agree with everything he does and the type of interviews he does or the people he does but yeah you can't deny the platform he built and his approach to media and the independent platform that he built yeah, and also yourself, right? right? So he's yeah. like, he's somebody outside of this room that I could look at him and say, like, you know, we had the interview with him, and you see all these comments and all these people saying all this bullshit yeah, about him. It's just the way. But it's yeah. like they don't, they don't really recognize that, you know, in 20 years, in 40 years, the only way you're going to really be able to learn about Jay-Z outside of his music mm-hmm. is, is listening to the Elliot Wilson in- interview. He's canon of interviews. You know, yeah. is, 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 has, is yeah. how do you learn yeah. about uh, yeah. Any of these, you know, all these people that you've had on yeah. Rap Radar, the Drake yeah. interview. It's yeah. look, look, nobody knows this. I don't even think you know it or you know it, right? Nobody. This is the, this is the first time I'm revealing this. There's a there, the your interview with Drake is what caused me to put chairs this way because there was four initially. Um, <laughs> I, I sent the interior designer that you there sent me the entire the interior design. <laughs> it's right there, you know, the interior designer that you sent me. Uh, I saw that this, there was this layout. I loved the interview, mm. right? And yes, I'm sir. like, wow, this is a moment in history. You're in this motherfucker's house. And mm-hmm. What the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's doing yeah, an interview yeah. in his house. It's crazy. And and I'm watching the layout, and I'm like, man, like, this is truly captivating. Like, when, you're, when, you, when you watch this, you, you kind of, it's, it's difficult 
to turn it off. Like mm. it's you know you if, you, if you, you hear the baby crying, it's like, <laughs> hey, chill out, you know, or whatever you're doing. It's like <laughs> you want to you want to get into this interview. So I, I feel like um, what you're doing is if you can even communicate it to the people, I, I don't know. You know, it's there, yeah. there's gonna be, it's gonna take time for mm. people to understand the influence that you are leaving on these other generations. Mm. Sometimes we can't even recognize it that quick because mm. I wouldn't have naturally said it. Now that I'm sitting in the room with you, I'm like, oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's a room. It was about thirty minutes ago. I was like, holy shit! You, I sent the picture to your interior designer yeah. Yeah. of him sitting in a room interviewing Drake, and I'm like, you see how this looks? That's how I want mine to look when they look through the camera. You know, so it's it's those things. Yeah. That I I don't even know if you could tell the influence that you're leaving or if you even understand it yourself, you know, because mm -hmm. as as confident as you are when you speak, I don't know if you know the impact yet. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's yeah. some people do and some people don't, but like it's it's hard. You, you know, when yeah. you're gone, when when you're no longer here, oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be lit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hate, but I hate I hate that you know yeah. I'll be the like, good right yeah like and why then why gotta... do you, listen, then why do you think people get so uncomfortable with me saying I think I'm the I'm the best like I'm the greatest or I'm the goat like it's so funny how like you think about the the very basic element is like we should believe in ourselves absolutely yeah. we should whatever so it's like especially in hip and I can love and again I can say sways this and Angie's this and Joe Buttons this and Charlamagne is that but I think I'm the goat I think I'm the greatest to ever do it. Why is that so triggering to people of like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's just crazy to me. Like you can't, you can't say that you think you're the best. Yeah. I, Why? It's, it, honestly, it don't make sense because in, 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 <laughs> you know in hip hop, like, in hip hop, that's a reoccurring thing. Best? That's MC. Yeah, MC. No MC should ever say somebody's better than them. Right. right. If you're an MC, like who's the best MC? Like me. Yeah, Kooji Raps not going to go, Rock Kim's the best. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be sure. like, oh, like, it'd be like the Fat Joe, oh, like, what are or, you talking about? Like, or if you do that, you could end up <laughs> like Macklemore. So, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was good. Don't do yeah. Macklemore. That's, right. comes, dance, that's comes, why it's a dance of yeah, yeah, comes full circle, baby. <laughs> so, here we go. <laughs> Dude. So all the shit that you executive producer, we just, we just, yeah, we might have, we might have not. That was good. I like how you not went in chronological I'll, order, I'll. right? We we might not have gone in chronological order. We might have talked about uh, 2017, 2012, <laughs> 1997, 2023, 2022, yes, 1998, yes, 1971. Sir. Right? We went through all this shit, but guess what? Life is big. Hello. There's this whole Hello. fucking, all this shit in front of us. If we sat here and I said, hey, one to 10, how you doing in this race? You know what I mean? You could give me a small answer. I'm asking you from one to a hundred. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Where do you feel like you're at in the scale of life? Mm. Damn. Right now? Yeah. What is the scale you're saying? One to what? One, one to a hundred. Where do you what feel I like you're at in the scale of life? Of all the shit that you've accomplished and where you're at in this, in this day and age. 60, 70. How the man. fuck are you at a 60 or 70? Because I'm a passionate motherfucker. Hey. So if you're at a 60 or 70, what the fuck does 100 look like? I don't know. I'm not going to live to see it. Unless I'm going to tap out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, what does I might, level I might of tell you what 95 look like? looks like. <laughs> yeah. 99.9, well, I can like tell you. But what does that look like? Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Because what what does it look like? Because you know I, I mean? don't know that that again. I this here's the thing. If you're an Elliot Wilson fan, <laughs> whatever that means, right? It's crazy. <laughs> um, I think I think 2024 is going to be the most uh, interesting uh, year of my career. You know, honestly, because I have a lot of ideas and I have some things in the can, but I don't have it all figured out. I'll be honest with you, I don't. But I also have learned to embrace that I don't, and uh, I'm excited. You know, like, I, I want to, like, impact this media space in a different type of way. I feel like what I do is different, so I'm excited. And, not, you know, everybody always has energy. You know, we, and one year, like, oh, this is going to be my years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and also, my birthday's in January, so I always feel like there's always yeah, this, yeah, always, yeah, this yeah, sort yeah, of yeah, state yeah, of the yeah, fair yeah. of, like, you know, where did things stand? My birthday is January 14th, so I'm like, okay, where did things stand? Like, what's yeah. my plan of attack? Blah, blah, So 
I'm bringing all that. So, you know, I, mean, may, I might have to come check with you guys next year at this time and see Hell where yeah. we stand. But it's like, that's what it's about. I'm excited by it. Like, I don't, I don't have it all figured out, but I think that's a good thing. But I also, here's the thing. I just want to do impactful work. That's all it comes down to. It's like when it when it gets real like hectic, it's almost like at the end of the day, it's like, you know, create great content, you know, and it's not easy. You know, it's not easy to create great content or good content or content that's really sustainable, that yeah, really has legs to it, captivating, yeah. that really is something. So that's all our challenges as creatives. Like, I think even as people that are so-called... Um, so called popular. <laughs> it's just like, um, you know, do I do I like what's the takeaway? Like, do I remember like even though you're on episode one hundred, whatever like do I care about what you did, you know, eighty episodes ago? Like what's still sustainable? Like what's still like impactful? You know what I mean? Like what's still measures who you are? I think that's our challenge we all face as creatives, you know, as the market gets, you know, intensified and like and you know what the and his end, we also know now it's like it's such a reassessment of even what a value of a podcast is right now in the marketplace, right? All I know is do great work, connect to the audience, and I think things will find its way. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. I have a quick question. Um, so, like, since you've been so far in the media landscape, what do you prefer? Do you prefer the old media with the magazines, or do you like it now in, like, the blog, podcast era cycle that we're in i have no choice i have to adapt mm. to what is. Right, i right think i sometimes you. lament that that what i did was like superhero shit of a thing that doesn't exist so it's hard to explain mm. how important that was i mean you guys kind of the last generation that knows what it meant mm. for that magazine there's to a say reason this why we're and, doing what we're doing yeah. today it's uh, yeah. because of things that we saw you're that the, you're that last generation of like knowing what that magazine meant in that marketplace the impact of that so I mean, I can have my moment of being sad and be like, oh, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> days, they they days don't know past, that. Yeah. They don't know that. But Flip you, to page 48. Yeah. There's a DVD that pops out. <laughs> Free internet for a month. Yeah. You know what I mean? Free internet. <laughs> a little bit of cologne you yeah, might yeah, get. Yeah. Dot, 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 yeah, backslash. Yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. Net zero dot com. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't think you have a choice. I think you have to adapt to the, to the times, per se. But I, what I wish that was that. And again, I think I'm competing against like what we're doing now. It's like I consider what whether it's podcasting, whether it's uh, inter internet, terrestrial, or traditional radio, it's broadcasting. We're broadcasting. Our okay. voices is this. We got mics. Yeah. And now, like, we also do video. Back then, it was like it was rare that the radio interview was videotaped. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we did an early no we did an early podcast at Rap Radio with Cardi. Uh, it was like. 2017 and Cardi came in and she wasn't camera ready. She right? wasn't ready for the visuals. She wasn't ready. So we did a radio thing and it was just like she didn't know it was going to be visual. And I could have ran a video, but I didn't run a video because it, she didn't look at her best. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. I don't want to be that scummy guy. That's like, so that's the that's the only rap radar where there's like no video that exists per per se. But now. If you go to the radio station, you know they're going to videotape. Oh, it's like, it ain't yeah. even no conversation anymore. Of like, I'm going to the breakfast. Are they going to do video? It's like, yeah, yeah dog, they're going to do video. Like, this video, like, for everything. So that's the difference of, like, you just have to adapt to everything that's going I, on. I think what something that, I, and this is just my personal opinion, something that I would really appreciate seeing you do and, and apply, especially when you're talking to these big celebrities and stuff like that, I could see you doing, like, a 60 minute dateline type of thing where yep. mm. well this and and this is something that I saw, I saw recently with Bootleg Kev. Yeah, Bootleg Kev, Kev was just Kev. he was just in a helicopter shooting hogs with Mexican OT. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and, then, and, then and then the next week he's on uh Grave Digger Ranch with NBA yeah, Youngboy. Yeah, yeah. But that's my journalist thing. Go uh, out and get the story. But I can that's see That's that traditional DNA. That's the biggest part people but get. I, I can see Everybody's you. not going to come to your radio station and, and do that, per se. But I can see you on location. And this is the reason why this connects to us, because you have an infectious laugh. You have a great mm -hmm. laugh. Thank you, I could see you on scene. You know, they're on the bus on the way to the safari in Africa, <laughs> and it's French Montana, and he's, yeah, yeah, he's he's helping out with the kids, and you guys are there just Montana, chopping it up like, yeah, yeah. you know, in ca camo pants <laughs> in the safari shirt with the bucket hat. You know, I could, I could see you doing that, yeah, and that's, in the that's, field. That's, yeah. The, that's the new wave content. It's, yeah. it's, it's still, get the story. It's still yeah. journalism. You're I still agree. going to so get the story. So can you cut this shit out with the weddings for a little bit, and let's get on the goddamn. We might have to do something. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on, man. What's the weddings done? We got to get a yeah, we yeah. gotta get married. Get him off for the honeymoon. 
And then it's our time. And he's going to want to travel. <laughs> and then he's going to want to travel. But like, hey, you get and your wife right. coming? No, I need to go. Hey, get, them off, get them off honeymoon out. Yeah. Loving couple. Hey, Peace and blessings. If we get boogie in, we, hey, we might be right. able to make something happen. <laughs> hey, Hello. Elliot, I, I will say this. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you for coming up here. This, this is this is another one. I feel like it didn't even start, man. That's what we aim for, man. That's what we no, aim I, I, for. It man. didn't well, start because questions. we got to go find out where the uh, what, what's going on over here at Art Basel, <laughs> and then it'll start there. I, you I know need the I, mean? I need the Justin Timberlake, Diddy, Cole, <laughs> <Justin> R- Beyonce. <laughs> Let's go. I need the I need that. Yo, you love the Justin Timberlake. I gotta hit this motherfucker, man. You gonna be an interview? Need that. He's like, yo, real like. <laughs> he's he's and what's crazy he's is like that whole thing <laughs> made you forget that Diddy slapped the shit out of Jay. <laughs> 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 Puff chilled out. Puff started looking at me like, okay, he cool. He talking to Justin. Yeah, he got yeah, it. Looking at the section, he's like, he's cool. Honestly, yeah. my favorite part of the story is Kendrick swinging his legs. That part stuck yeah, out to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you because know, they because they said that I, again. I don't know. I wasn't part. They said that part of the conflict was. That Puff was breaking his balls about uh, King of New York type shit, oh, and, shit. Oh. in front of Kendrick with Cole. Like he yeah, probably did. I don't. Yeah. I wasn't. Again, I wasn't there. I was on the side of the thing. With my good back with back. And again, I never saw nobody get like kicked out the club so officially, Swift, swiftly, swiftly. <laughs> Sw- like military. Yeah, it's like the bodyguards was on point. Like, oh, there's yes. a Puff again. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that type of party, but you can't fuck with a Diddy security I team. You know what I mean? That's, that's the top floor, tier. I was like, yo. I thought it was just like some eager party goer that invaded the space and was like, yeah, <laughs> somebody like, fucked. They got a little too drunk. Whatever. But to see Kendrick, that's the, and then the Macklemore Kendrick, that, that that actually does make it a great story. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Kendrick all those shit, elements, man. It's, a lot it's of shit. insane. It'd be a shout out, Punch, man. Punch will tell you that that's a true story because you never see like TDs in the club, so it's like Top true. Dog, yeah, Kendrick, true. Punch. Like we're in New York, it's like he had put out the control verse. Like, you know how everybody Ooh. went crazy on the control verse? Oh, yeah. It's the high to the control verse. Best control now, verse now, response, friend, Joe that Budden. Was, that was the control verse. Joe that Budden was, that was, was dope. Response, yeah. Joe Budden's response was crazy. But, like, yeah, that, that was the high to that, too. That was the whole <laughs> undercurrent, too. It was like, wow. You have somebody animate that. <laughs> That's going to be some fire YouTube content, <laughs> man. Yeah. Shit. But the fact I was like, I didn't, know I, was, I didn't know I was clowning Cole. I was like, yo, k what's up with these things? I <laughs> 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 Come on! Oh I, can't, I can't have therapy, man. My life is too. This crazy, was therapy man. right fucking now. Are you kidding me? This was therapy right now. Yes. Yo, this was what it was. Was episode one hundred and fifty-three. Orlando, am I right? I'm yeah, right. No, you're definitely right. right. He's a whole right, shit. Yeah, I'm tired right. of being wrong. Now, <laughs> I'm tired of being wrong. This was episode one fifty-three. We had my guy Elliot Wilson in the building. I'm ready for part you know two. I mean? soon. Come on, yeah, let's part get two it. soon. The doors are always open. We got a lot of dope shit, and we we definitely Ooh, would our to best back. week. Hello, let's get it. I gotta set it off, Ricky Henderson style. Thank yeah. you guys. Let's get yes, it, sir. Orlando Yo, getting at it, new generation, man. Yeah. Come on.